Are we okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, for that. So let's now continue. So what we have mentioned, these are the criteria that are expected to be satisfied at the end of the reporting period. Are we okay? So don't forget I told you, when an asset is being held, as, I mean, it's been classified as being held for sales. All these criteria, don't forget, we have them. Number one, it must be what? It must be available for sales. Are you getting me? Huh? Not only that, the sales must be highly worth probable. Not only that, the sales must be highly probable. Money, there must be commitment on the part of the management to do what? To sell the asset. And they must be looking for, they must, there must be a plan on ground. Are you getting me? To locate who? To locate the buyer. That particular asset must be sold at a price that is reasonable to its fair world, fair value. You get not only that, uh, when you have said that a particular asset has been held for sale, you I mean there is expectation of disposing it within how many months? Within 12 months. And you don't have any plan to withdraw that one, to withdraw from what? From selling it. Don't forget, there may be a situation that will go beyond the control of what? Of the reporting entity to dispose it of within one year. If there is that still condition, that does not preclude the fact that we should still need to recognize it as well, non current asset head for what says. Let me tell you, I can have tested that particular characteristics in the past diet and it can still be tested. Am I communicating at all? It can still be tested. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, for that. Now, if the criteria are satisfied, if the criteria are satisfied, after the end of the reporting period, after the end of the reporting period, but before the financial statement are authorized for issue, but before the financial statement are authorized for issue, comma, the fact that the asset is now classified the fact that the asset is now classified, the fact that the asset is now classified has been held for sales, has been held for sales, should be disclosed, should be disclosed in the note to the financial statement. If these criteria are not satisfied, if these criteria are not satisfied, if these criteria are not satisfied, at the end of the reporting period, at the end of the reporting period, the asset should, at the asset should not be classified as held for sales. As held for sales. I want you to note the two statements. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if at 31st of December of a financial year, are you 31st of December of a particular financial year, you have not classified some of your assets as being held for sales. Am I talking? So that means the financial statement for that financial year, you shouldn't have anything like what non-current asset held for sales there. But it is very possible that. Between the end of the financial period and the date in which certain set of documents is going to be authorized as financial statement, in accordance with the provision of international accounting standard, there, you have now classified some assets. That does not mean that you are going to treat it as non-adjusting event. You are not going to treat it as adjusting. It is non-adjusting event. But there will be, that is why they say there will be a disclosure required. Yeah, man. It will be non-adjusting event, but there will be what? Disclosure required. Yeah, man. Am I communicating? So any non-current assets L for sales, you get me, that has been reclassified, that is has been classified after the end of the reporting period will be treated as what? Non-adjusting event. For structural materiality, such event we need to be what? Disclosed as a footnote to what? To the financial statement. Am I communicating? So note it very well. Note it. So ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, uh, what we need to discuss on this world. International accounting and financial reporting standard was five. So let's now continue.
Measurement of non-current asset efforts. So though I've discussed the measurement with you before, but you can still put this note down. IFRS 5 requires that. IFRS 5 requires that a non-current asset, a non-current asset, or a disposal group, or a disposal group that is held for sales, that is held for sales, should be measured, should be measured at the lower of its carrying amount, at the lower of its carrying amount, when it was initially classified as being held for sales, when it was initially classified as held for sales, and its fair value less cost to sell, and its fair value less cost to sell, and its fair value less cost to, to sell. So don't forget what I told you. I have given you the information that any asset that is being held for sale, if it is depreciable asset, immediately you have classified it as being held for sale, you should not depreciate it again. If it is amortizable or non-current asset, immediately you have classified it as what? As what? Current asset uh, as being held for sale, you should do what? You should not amortize it again. These are facts you need to know under International Financial Reporting Standard what? Standard 5. Am I communicating at all? So note it, note it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is for what? Non-current asset, and for what? And for sales. Non-current asset, and for sales. It's all bedding again. Measurement of assets, measurement of assets, no longer classified, no longer classified as held for sale. Measurement of asset no longer classified as held for sales. Now, don't forget, under International Accounting Standard 36, which is impairment of asset. You know, we have reversal of impairment laws, Abby. So it, this one is very similar to the reversal of impairment law. Assuming you have classified a particular asset as being held for sales, and something happens that uh, those criteria are not met again, let us assume that you look for the buyer and you cannot get the buyers again. You now decide the well, what is the essence of reclassifying it as being held for sales? Let her reclassify it as what as what non-current asset. The issue is that if you have now decided to reclassify it as current uh, non-current asset, what are you going to do? So if we can see it as a reversal, Abby, it's also a reversal on its case. Let's put something down. If an asset or disposal group, if an asset or disposal group, if an asset or disposal group, if an asset or disposal group as held for sale, has been classified as held for sales, has been classified as held for sales. But then the criteria for this classification, but then the criteria for this classification are no longer met. The criteria for this classification are no longer met. Are no longer met. The asset or disposal group, the asset or disposal group should cease to be classified as L for sales. Should stop to be classified as L for sales. To stop to be classified as held for six. As held for six.
As effort says, and should be measured. And should be measured at the lower of its fanning amount. And should be measured at the lower of its scanning as the lower of A, its scanning amount. A, its scanning amount. Before being classified as S for C's, before being classified as L for C's, less any depreciation, less any depreciation that would have been charged, that would have been charged, less any depreciation that would have been charged if it has not been held for sales if it is it has not been held for sales and it's recoverable amount and b it's recoverable amount and b it's recoverable amount at the date at the date that the decision that the decision not to set it again is made who's talk i will not the issue not to set it again is made who's talk let me now ask you a question let me ask you a question. What is recoverable amount? What is recoverable amount for students? Student. Any of the students? What is recoverable, what is recoverable amount? amount? This is the amount that an asset can be disclosed. It's like a residual value of the asset. No, no. Lower of um, fair value. Very good of you. Lower of the fair value less disposal cost and what? And value in use. Lower of the fair value less disposal cost and value in what? In use. That is the recoverable amount. The, truly, the recoverable amount simply means that the amount that we can recover from asset, either through continued usage or through sales. And that's why we see. Recoverable amount is the word, is the word, the word, is the word, is the higher, not lower, is the higher. Recoverable amount is the higher, not lower, in accordance with IS 16 and IS 36. Recoverable amount is the higher, not lower. Please note it, correct it. The higher, higher of the fair value, less cost of disposal. Before they call it less cost to sell, but it has been changed, but they refuse to work, less cost to disposal. The higher of the fair value less cost to disposal and value in use. The higher of the fair value less cost to disposal and value in what? In use. Telling you that there are two ways by which we can recover value from the asset. The first one is to continue to be making use of it. The second way is to sell it and get the value from it immediately. You get me? And that's why they say it is the higher of the two. The rational woman being we want to have the higher. Am I communicating at all? So note it note it so ladies and gentlemen that is what that is a non-current asset health for sales they can ask you in the exam how do we present non-current asset health for sales how do we present non-current asset health for sales non-current asset health for sales for individual assets or disposal group should be presented under what current world current asset is going to be classified as what as current asset that is its presentation we have discussed measurement we have discussed what Presentation now, Abby. It will be presented here in the statement of financial position separately under what? Under the current assets. Are you getting me? But you can put this note down. Non current asset air forces, an asset of a disposal group air forces, should be presented separately 
from other assets. To be presented separately from other assets in the current asset in the statement of financial position in the statement of financial position on that current asset on that current asset similarly the liabilities of a disposal group the liabilities of a disposal group should be presented separately from other liabilities other liabilities to stop please sir, similarly similarly the liabilities of a disposal group should be presented separately from other liabilities to stop from other liabilities, full stop. Are we okay? Now, Hello, please, sir. Can... Your, ask your question, please. You have the Sorry, floor. Sorry, sir. I got cut off network. I did not get this last part of the class, sir. Similarly, the liabilities of a disposal group. Similarly, the liabilities of a disposal group should be presented separately. Should be presented separately from other liabilities. Should be presented separately from other world, other liabilities. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of what I frs5 as it relates to non-current asset help for sale. don't forget that i told you that under international financial reporting standard five we have two things there the first thing is what non-current asset help for sale. the other part of it is continued operation in the next few minutes let's look at discontinued operation discontinued operation Now, what do we mean by discontinued operation? You may have a segment, you may have a branch, a geographical location, or a business world, a business segment that you want to stop to be operating it. Are you getting me? We will regard to something as what? As discontinued world operation. Are we okay? So this is not the same thing with what non-current asset. Help for what? Help for six. Now, let's and yet in the next 10 minutes, we should be able to complete it, or in the next 15 minutes. So let's put something down on this continued operation. A discontinued operation is a component of an entity. A discontinued operation is a component of an entity. that either has been disposed of either has been disposed of or is classified as held for sales or is classified as held for sales is classified as held for sales that is a b B is a component of an entity is a component of an entity is a component of an entity comprises operations comprises operations and cash flows that can be clearly distinguished that can be clearly distinguished from the rest of the entity from the rest of the entity i wanted to say that's the cash generating unit 
that is a cash generating unit or a group of such units. A group of such units. Who stop? In general, in general, a paragraph. In general, in general, a discontinued operation. A discontinued operation we represent a separate major line of business. A major line of business or geographical area of operation. Major line of business or geographical area of operation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, assuming you are making various types of products and you discontinue to, you, you want to stop to be making such work, such product, we are going to see it as a discontinued work operation. We will see it as what? As a separate major line of business. Assuming you have branch, you have what? You have different units in, um, at, I mean, all over the states. But because of the fact that uh, Northern State, let's say Sanfara, you have one branch in Sanfara or Nosarawa, and because of this issue of all these uh, attackers there, are you getting me very well? You find it very difficult to continue your operation, and you now decide to close down that. You are going to see it as a discontinued world. That's a geographical loca location. A line of operation, a geographical location that you have discontinued. Are you getting me? So it is still under this discontinued world operation. Am I communicating? Now, the presentation and disclosure requirements. The presentation and disclosure requirements in relation to discontinued operation. In relation to discontinued operation is as follows. It's as follows. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will rather demonstrate it than to give you notes. That demonstration will clear everything you need to know. Assuming we are having what income statement like this for a, a business that has discontinued part of its operation or geographical location, so its income statement is going to look like this. We have statement of profit or loss. Let's say A, B, C, T, P, L, C. For the year ended, 31st December, 2018. <laughs> Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have revenue, cost of sales, gross profits. We have what? Distribution costs, admin expenses, all this will be deducted. Let's say we have what? Profit before what? Profit before taxation, we have what tax expense, and we have profit for what? Profit for the year, ladies and gentlemen. This profit for the year, 
you denote it as what you describe it as what from continuing operation after that how do you show this continued operation this is it you now say profit for the year profit on what this continued operation this will be profit profit after tax from this continued operation what eh? are we okay so this profit will now be brought here you are now having what total what total profit for this period so you can see this is how you will disclose this continued operation from the income statement whatever the profit you are going to make or loss you are going to make net of the tax you are going to put recognize it after profit for the year but you are going to call that profit for the year profit from continuing what operation why profit from discontinued operation or loss from discontinued operation is going to be recognized separately like that in the income statement am i communicating to note it so that is when we are not going to have profit for the year before we now talk of what other what other comprehensive income Profit for what? For the year. After this one, we now recognize what other what? Other comprehensive income. Are we okay? So this is a presentation where there is profit from what? From continued, I mean from what? Discontinued operation. Am I communicating? So this is how you are going to be dealing with it when you come across it in the quest. Examiner will give you what this is what continuity is this continued operation. Am I talking? So note it. And that sees the hand to what? To this continued operation. So any one of these can be tested. Whether what? Non current asset health for six and what? And what? The what? This continued operation. So those are the two things we have under international financial reporting standard five. Are we okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, after this one, let us quickly navigate to another international financial reporting standard. Let's navigate to another international financial reporting standard Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is one international financial reporting standard that they are also fond of testing uh, at this final level. That is International Financial Reporting Standard 16. Accounting for what? For leaks. I, I mean, IFRS 16. IFRS 16. So let's look at the summary of that international financial reporting standard and the main thing there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget yesterday when I explained international accounting standard 40 for you, I made mention of operating, operating lease and what and finance it. As far as finance lease is concerned, the risk and reward is going to be transferred to what to the lease. Are you getting me? But for the operating risk, 
uh what uh, the what the leaser will retain the risk and what and reward of the asset am i communicating at all now ladies and gentlemen uh under this international financial reporting standard let's see what we can achieve there so let's try small notes introduction ifrs 16 was issued in 2016 IFRS 16 was issued in 2016. IFRS 16 was issued in 2016. And must be applied for accounting period. And must be applied for accounting period. And must be applied for accounting period beginning, beginning on or before 1st of January 2019. On or after 1st of January 2019. On or after January 2019. Come again, sir. IFR assistance was issued. Was issued. in 2016 and must be applied for accounting periods beginning and must be applied for accounting periods beginning on or after 1st of january 2019 on or after 1st of january 2019 though earlier application is permitted So earlier application is permitted. IFRS system was developed in the joint project. IFRS system was developed in a joint project with the US. In a joint project with the US. Financial Accounting Standard Board. Financial Accounting Standard Board. U.S. Financial Accounting Standard Board. And the content of this accounting standard, the content of this accounting standard supersedes, supersedes the content of the former IAS 17. supersedes the content of the former world international accounting standard 17. so that is telling you that by now there is no is 17 again what we are now having here now is what ifrs 16. so ifrs 16 discuss anything you want to do on what on this now now ladies and gentlemen before we move on there is a particular statement that i want to clarify you know, in like on, on the ninth of this month, ninth of April, International Accounting Standard Board released new International Financial Reporting Standard, which is IFRS 18. International Financial Reporting Standard 18 will supersede International Accounting Standard One. Are you getting me? And uh, as far as that accounting standard is concerned, uh, it must be applied for accounting period. Are you the beginning on or after 1st of January 2027? 1st of January 2027. But the earlier adoption is permitted. What should that, in fact, in the international financial reporting standard that is developed by International Accounting Standard Board, they will put that clause there that earlier adoption is permitted. What do they mean by earlier adoption? Ladies and gentlemen, we may have some organizations, we may have some entities that will be willingly decide to do all, to apply such international financial reporting standard. Before that effective date, they are permitted to apply it. But let me tell you, if they are permitted, if they want to apply international financial reporting standard 18, should there be any international financial reporting standard that has been what, that has been developed and released before that international financial reporting standard 18, like, IFRS 17 for insurance contract now. 
If the entity is insurance company and that entity has not adopted IFRS 103, it is mandated on it that that entity has to adopt what? the international financial reporting standards. Except where that international financial reporting standard is not applicable to its operation. You can't be saying that banks should apply IFRS 17. IFRS 17 does not relate to their own operation. Am I communicating with what? It is purely on what? On insurance function. But international accounting standard one is applicable to any organization that wants to adopt international financial reporting. And so far, what this international financial reporting standard 18 is coming to do is to supersede the content of I1, IAS1. Definitely, anybody that wants to adopt it must have adopted any other accounting standard that comes before work for them. Am I communicating at all? So that's what we mean by what? Earlier what? Earlier adoption is permitted. Am I communicating? Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the objective of this accounting standard are as follows. Are as follows. We have objectives of this accounting standard are as follows. Number one, the, okay, definition of the term lease. Definition of the term lease. Lease, inception date, inception date, ah. lease, inception date, commencement date, and lease time. Another one, account for a lease in financial statement of leasee. Account for a list in the financial statement of LISI in accordance with the requirement of IFRS system. In accordance with the requirement of IFRS system. Now, listen to anyway. We have LISI, we have LISO. But how do we account for that particular transaction in the account of LISI? That is what is going to, is going to be your focus. Your reporting entity might be a LISI. Your reporting entity may be a resort, but we are looking at this at this particular topic in the angle of what of DC. Am I talking now? We are coming back to that. After that, measure a lease right of use asset. Measure a lease's right of use asset. Right of use asset and lease liability. And lease liability. and lease liability both at the commencement date of lease both at the commencement date of lease and in subsequent period both at the commencement date of lease and in subsequent period to talk another one distinguish between finance and operating lease Distinguish between finance and operating lease. Okay. Account for finance lease and operating lease. Another one. Account for finance lease and operating lease. In the financial statement of the resort. Account for both operating and finance lease in the financial statement of resort. And discussion on sales and lease back. Discussion on sales and lease back. Who stop? We are the definition. IFRS system defines a lease as a contract. IFRS system defines a lease as a contract or part of a contract. A contract or part of a contract that conveys that conveys the right to use an asset. The right to use an asset 
for a period of time. In exchange for consideration. In exchange for what? For consideration. Full stop. The right to use an asset for a period of time. In exchange for what? Now, if I, do we have anybody here? Do we have any one of you, either factual or physical student, that is into this what? Lease agreement with anybody. Do we have anybody among you that is into lease agreement with anybody? Do we have any virtual student? Hello, virtual student. Hello, virtual student. Hello, sir. Is there any one of you that is in this agreement with anybody? I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not in lease uh, agreement with uh, anybody, but I'm I belong not, to I'm a particular not. organization that enter into lease agreement with some organization. Have you built a house? Built a house? Are you living in your, you living apartment? your own apartment? If you have any one of us that is still living in a rented apartment, that person is in what? Into a lease agreement. Are you getting me? That's a simple example of lease agreement. You are using another person's right and you are paying that person. What you are paying that person is a consideration. At times we are going to be in an agreement, we will not know that this is the type of agreement we involve ourselves in. Renting a property, using the property of another person and making payment on it is a lease agreement. Am I communicating at all? I think that simple example of lease agreement is, is clear to you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Do you get it clearly? Hello, virtual student. Yes, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. If you have any one of you that is still living in the rented apartment, that person is into a lease agreement. Are we okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, what do we mean by inception? The inception date of a lease. The inception date of a lease. The inception date of a lease is the higher of the date of a lease agreement. The higher of the day, uh, earlier, earlier of the date of a lease agreement. Earlier of the date of a lease agreement and the date of commitment by the parties. And the date of commitment by the parties. The date of commitment by the parties. To the principal terms and conditions of the lease. To the principal terms and conditions of the lease. That is just it. The commencement date. What do we mean by commencement date? The commencement date of a lease is the date. The commencement date of a lease is the date. On which a lease or on which a lease or makes an underlying asset available for use. Makes an underlying asset for use available for use by a lease. But in Lisi, who stop? Another paragraph. I believe you have got the difference between what commencement day and inception day. Because I know some of you might want to ask a question. Is the inception day not the same thing with what with commencement day? So commencement day is the only day that the world the lease makes asset asset available for you. So of two. So why the world? Why the inception day is the earlier of what? The date of a lease agreement and the date of commitment by the by the party to the principal term and condition of the lease. Am I communicating? Now, for a contract to qualify as a lease, for a contract to qualify as a lease, for a contract 
as it leaves. It must convey the right to control. It must convey the right to control the use of the underlying asset. The right to convey the, the, right, the right to control the use of underlying assets for a period of time. For a period of time. Who stop? Who stop? Throughout the period of use, throughout the period of use, Specified in the contract, comma. Specified in the contract, the leasee must have. The leasee must have both of the following. The leasee must have both of the following. You see, these two things I want to mention now. They are very important in this accounting standard, and that is how you can make you to do what you, what you can use. So, prefer answer to a question under this accounting standard, but because under IAS 17, which was some accounting standard on DC, these two conditions are not specifically stated here, but they are clearly stated in this particular one, IFRS 16, which is an improvement on what we have under IAS 17. Now, one, the right to obtain substantially, the right to obtain substantially all the economic benefit. All the economic benefits from the use of the underlying asset. From the use of the underlying asset. That is, after exclusive use of it, in bracket. That is, after exclusive use of it. Number two. Number two. The right to direct, number two, the right to direct the use of the asset. Number two, the right to direct the use of the asset. Are we okay? Good stop. Under it, if these conditions are satisfied, if these conditions are satisfied for only part of the term of a contract, for only part of the term of a contract, the, the contract is a lease for only that part of the term. There, the contract is a lease. There, the contract is a lease for only that part of the term. In other words, in other words, the contract contains a lease. The contract contains what? A lease. Who's stop? Now, ladies and gentlemen, oh yeah, accounting by accounting for lease in the in the book of lease. In the book of Lisi. Huh? No, Oh, Now, ladies and gentlemen, accounting for what? For well, Lisi. Lisi in, in the book of Lisi. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Lisi is going to have to the right to do it. Are we okay? Are we okay? Ah. 
Now, the leasing will show it as asset. The leasing will show, also show it like uh, the obligation of that asset will be shown as well as liability in the book of what? In the book of the seat. Asset will be shown, and the obligation related to that asset is also going to be disclosed. Am I correct? Okay. IFRS system requires that. IFRS system requires that at the commencement of a lease, at the commencement of a lease, the leasee should recognize a right of use asset. The, the leasee should recognize a right of use asset. and a corresponding lease liability and a corresponding lease liability a corresponding lease what liability are we okay the requirement to recognize a right of use of asset, a right of use asset, and a lease liability, and a lease liability. The requirement to recognize a right of use asset, a right of use asset, a right of use asset, and a lease liability, and a lease liability generally applies to all leases. To all leases. Who stop? Listen there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the former International Accounting Standards 17, uh, the word, the lease is not expected to show short-term lease operating lease as asset an obligation on it leasing is also going to be showing lease renter as well as payment as expense in its financial statement leasing will also be as asset but that is what international accounting international financial reporting standards system has come to change i frs system has come to change that treatment now any type of leasing it's now going to be recognized as both asset and liability in the book of who? In the book of lease, any type of lease, whether it is short term or what, long term, finance lease or what, operating, will be show asset, will be show liability. Except if lease opted out, lease has option to do what? To treat short term, not to show short term. Are you getting it? Or a lease that has insignificant value as asset and liability. You get me? So, this has that option on the International Financial Reporting Standard Award 16. I mean, the ordinary lease, all that says, are you getting it? That is under, I mean, any asset that is under lease, whether it is operating this or what, or finance this, this is expected to show it as asset and liability. Unlike how it is being dealt with. How it has because somebody dealt with under what under international accounting standards 17. So I want you to note that area very well. When they ask you of the treatment of what of the lease, I mean, I mean of lease transaction. So let's and gentlemen. Uh, however, an entity may elect, however, an entity may elect, an entity may elect not to apply this accounting treatment not to apply this accounting treatment to Roman figure one, short-term leases, short-term leases. That is, leases of 12 months or less. Lease of how many months or less? 12 months or less, that's one. And two, Leases for leases for which underlying asset is low, is of low, is of low value. Leases 
leases for which underlying asset is of low value. Is of low value. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I told you something that under the former International Accounting Standard 17, short term lease will not be shown as an asset, Abby, and there will be no liability for it. Any rental payment of it, you are going to be showing it as well on expenses, Abby. So now, where you have now elected not to show asset and liability for short term lease or this or this that is underlying asset as low value, you get it. That means whatever you incur on it, you are going to be showing it as well expense. Just like at the former debt in the former IAS work am I communication? Is that I mean statement clear to you? Now, ladies and gentlemen, if such election is made, if such election is made, the lease payments for the leases concerned, the lease payments for the leases concerned are recognized as an expense. Are recognized as an expense and spread over the list terms and spread over the list terms. Usually on a straight line basis. Usually on a straight line basis. Put on. There is no right of use asset or lease liability. There is no right of use asset or lease liability. Full stop. Full stop. The election for short term leases should be made. The election for short term leases should be made. The election for short term leases should be made by class of underlying asset. By class of underlying asset. We are a class, is a grouping of assets of a similar nature and use. We are a class. It's a group of assets of a similar nature and use. Of a similar nature and use. The election for leases of low value assets should be made. The election for leases of low value assets should be made on a lease by lease basis. On a lease by lease basis. To stop. To stop. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, as far as uh, this uh, asset of low value is concerned, it is not defined under international finance, financial reporting standard system. Are you getting me? So that the management is going to make use of their judgment to determine what they are going to be considered to be what low value assets are we okay now but in the guidance we are having what we are having some examples we are giving example given in the application guidance include personal computer small items of what furniture office what office furniture those examples are given in the world in the application guidance to international financial reporting standard system as well as asset of low world low value are you getting it personal computer small items of work of uh, office furniture you can have examples of them as low value or low value as or asset of low or low value. Are we okay? Now, this and the initial measurement of the right of use asset and the lease liability. Initial measurement of the right of use asset and initial liability. The right of use asset. Anytime you hear right of use asset, that is the underlying asset under lease arrangement. The right of use asset, which is recognized, 
which is recognized at the commencement of a lease is measured initially at cost. Is measured initially at cost. Cost is measured initially at cost. Are we okay? It's measured initially at cost. The cost of the right of use asset is obtained. The cost of the right of use asset is obtained. The cost of the right of use asset is obtained by adding together the following element. By adding together the following element. Number one. The amount of the initial measurement of the lease liability. The amount of the initial measurement of the lease liability. The amount of the initial measurement of the lease liability to any lease payment made. Any lease payment made at or before the commencement date. Any lease payment made at or before the commencement date. E.g. initial deposit. E.g. initial deposit. Number three, any initial direct cost incurred. Any initial direct cost incurred by the lessee. Any initial direct cost incurred by the lessee. And number four, any estimate of any cost to be incurred by the lessee. Any estimate of any cost to be incurred by the lessee. In dismantling or removing the underlying asset, in dismantling, dismantle, in dismantling or removing the underlying asset, dismantling or removing the underlying asset, at the end of the lease term, comma, returning the site on which it is located. Restoring the site on which it is located or restoring the asset as required by the term of the lease or restoring the asset as required by the lease. To stop. In this regard, in this regard, the basis for conclusion for IFRS system states that the basis of conc for conclusion for IFRS system states that states that initial measurement at court is consistent is consistent with the measurement of many other assets. Is consistent with the measurement of many other assets. Of many other assets, e.g. property, plant, and equipment. That the initial measurement at cost Initial measurement of many other assets. Initial measurement of many other assets. Initial measurement of many other assets, e.g., property, plant, and equipment. And it's less costly and expensive, it's less, it's less complex and costly. 
is less complex and costly is less complex and costly for entities for entities for entities rather than measurement at fair value rather than measurement at what value at fair value rather than measurement at fair value especially in the case of assets especially in the case of assets for which there is no active market for which there is no one active market am i communicating now, ladies and gentlemen, in this international financial reporting standard system, they do not mention anything fair value. So the list, the what, this uh, underlying asset must not be measured at all at fair value because under international accounting standard, financial reporting standard system, fair value is not mentioned at all. In the former international financial reporting standard system, the main measure of what of fair value. The international accounting standard system, the main measure of what fair value. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue. You know, we said that there are four things that we are going to have had together, Abby. The amount of initial measurement of what? Of the lease liability, Abby. After that, any deposit you must have made on the lease center, Abby. After that, any what? Any initial direct cost you must have been incurred. And any dismantling cost or restoration work, restoring cost. Are you getting it? These are four things we are going to get had together as the initial cost of what? Of the what? Of the underlying asset. Are you getting it? They don't mention anything like what their value under international financial reporting standard what system. So now that list liability we are now talking of. How are we going to get that first one? Any amount of the initial measurement of the list liability. So when we are talking of the initial measurement of the list liability, it is very simple. It is very simple. Initial measurement of the what of the list liability is just what and only suggesting whatever the rental fee you are going to take from that what you are going to pay on what on uh, that particular asset you are going to discount it that, that is the present value of the rental fee you are going or rental payment you are going to make on are you getting me paid on that particular asset that is what we mean by what initial what initial measurement of the list liability so let's continue the list liability which is recognized the list liability which is recognized at the commencement date at the commencement date is measured initially is measured initially at the present value of the lease payment the present value of the lease payment The present value of the lease payment. The present value of the lease payment. Which falls due after that date. Which falls due after that date. Full stop. This payment should be discounted at the interest rate implicit in the lease. This payment should be discounted at interest rate implicit in the lease. Interest rate implicit in the lease. If this is known. So please come again. The lease liability, which is recognized at the commencement date, is measured initially at the present value of the lease payment, which was due after that date. This payment should be discounted
This payment will be discounted at the interest rate implicit in the lease. If this is known, or at the least incremental borrowing rate otherwise, at the least incremental borrowing rate otherwise, yeah, it is not known. You are going to use what? Least incremental borrowing rate. So that is just it. I believe you have known how this was, how this asset is going to be what the underlying asset for, for this uh, is going to be recognized initially. Abby, initial measurement of what of the lease liability plus what initial deposit plus what any other direct cost that is incurred and what dismantling cost. All those four costs will be added together. And we have a document of initial measurement of the lease liability. It is the present value of what of the lease of what of the what of rental payment you are going to pay. Making use of what the implicit cost of capital. Are you getting me? Or we are implicit cost of capital is not known. What are you going to use? Huh? Incremental what? Borrowing cost. Am I communicating? Now, subsequent measurement. Subsequent measurement. Subsequent measurement. Now, subsequent measurement is very interesting and very simple. After initial period that you have recognized assets, are you getting together with your obligation? You know, as far as obligation you pay is concerned, any part of the obligation you pay, you are going to remove it. Are you getting so the balance is what you are going to show in the statement of what financial position? And you must know something as far as obligation is concerned. At the end of every reporting period, you should ensure that you are splitting obligation to two. The one that is falling due within one year, the one that is falling due after more than one year, that part of that obligation that is falling due within one year will be shown in the statement of financial position as current liability. Why those ones that are falling due after more than one year will be shown as what? Well, as current as I mean as what well, non-current liability. The one that is falling due after more than one year, non-current liability. The one that is falling due within one year, current what liability. As far as the asset is concerned, so why it is asset? You get me. At the end of every year, you are going to subject it to annual depreciation and what and amortization in accordance with the proof and what and what impairment law. If it has in, if it is impaired, you will see recognize impairment laws of it in accordance with the provision of international accounting standard 16, property plant and what equipment. Am I communicating? So you should note it. So you can see that. There is a linkage between that international financial reporting standard and IS 16 when it comes to the subsequent what subsequent measurement of what of the lease assets. Am I communicating? Subsequent measurement of the lease asset follows what we have under international what financial international accounting standard what 16. Are you okay? So it can be at all, it can be at revalued world. So let's now write something. In most cases, in most cases, virtual student, are you following? Hello, virtual students. In most cases, the right of use asset established. The right of use asset established at the commencement of a lease. At the commencement of a lease, should be measured subsequently. Should be measured subsequently at cost at cost less accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses cost model in bracket the cost model in bracket are we okay the asset should be depreciated in accordance with IS 16. The asset should be depreciated in accordance with IS 16.
and impairment losses should be accounted for in accordance with IS 36. It should be noted that one IS 36. Sir, please come in again. In, an impairment losses should be accounted for in accordance with IAS 36. Impairment laws should be accounted for in accordance with what? IAS 36. Are we okay? It should be noted that one, If the lease transfer ownership of the asset, if the lease transfer ownership of the underlying asset to the leasee by the end of lease term, by the end of lease term, or if the lease, if the leasee is expected to exercise a purchase option. If the leasee is expected to exercise a purchase option, the right of use of asset, the right of use of asset should be depreciated. Should be depreciated up to the end of the useful life of the underlying asset. The right of use of the asset should be depreciated up to the end of the useful life of the underlying asset. Now, what we mean by that is that uh, the lease at the end of the well, at the end of the expiry lease expiry term, DC may decide to do what to exercise purchase option. They may, you know, their, that clause is going to be there that way. At the end of the list time, most especially if it is finance list, at the end of the list time, you have a free right to acquire the asset, to buy the asset out. Are you getting me? If that option is there, or if there is what, if there is condition, if it is in the term that that asset is going to be transferred to what? To the list, that the asset can be depreciated over the world, useful lifespan. Am I communicating at all? B, otherwise, if the right of use asset should be depreciated. B. Otherwise, the right of use asset should be depreciated. The right of the use asset should be depreciated up to the earlier of the end of the lease term. Up to the earlier of the end of the lease term. Earlier of the end of the lease term and the end of the useful life and the end of the useful life of the right to use assets of the right to use assets Are we okay? Full stop. So that is for that. Another paragraph. As regards the liability, as regards the liability to the lease or, as regards the liability to the lease or, Each lease payment is a portion. Each lease payment is a portion between interest, between interest and the amount that reduces the outstanding liability. And the amount that reduces the outstanding liability. Who talk? Who talk? 
Now, the simple example to that is just, you know, when you repay loan, assuming you have, you have obtained bank loan, you now want to redeem it over five years, you want to amortize it over five years, you are going to prepare your loan amortization schedule. Whatever you are, the repayment of that loan in every year, we have the capital sum you are repaying and the interest element. And that is exactly what we are talking about on any work, on this any rental payment you might be, on any work, any lease. So you have to split it into two, the finance charge element and what? And the capital part of it that you are repaying, the outstanding liability that you are repaying. So that outstanding liability is going to be reducing the world, the liability that you are having in the payment of financial position on annual basis. Am I communicating? As the depreciation is going to be reducing asset, so the repayment capital sum that you are repaying will be reducing the liability. Am I talking? And don't forget the finance charge on what on lease is going to be recognized as part of finance cost in the income world in the income statement. Don't forget. Finance charge is going to be recognized as part of what finance cost in the world in the income statement before we get to profit before taxation. Am I talking? So note it. Now, IFRS system requires that interest on liability should be calculated. IFRS system requires that interest on the liability should be calculated in such a way that In such a way that, I mean, in such in such a way as to produce, in such a way as to produce a constant periodic rate of interest, a constant periodic rate of interest on the remaining balance of lease liability, on the remaining balance of the lease liability. To stop. The interest rate applied should be discount, should be the discount rate. The interest rate applied should be the discount rate. Should be the discount rate which was used. When initially measuring the lease liability when initially measuring the word, the least liability. Take down this illustration, please. On 1st of January 2019, on 1st of January 2019, A company which prepares account to 31st December. A company which prepares account to 31st of December enters into a five-year lease of a building. Enters into a five-year lease of a building. Enters into a five years lease of a building from a property developer. From a property developer. Lease payments are 40,000 naira per annum. Lease payments are 40,000 naira per annum. Payable in advance. Payable in advance on 1st of January in each year. On 1st of January in each year. To stop. The rate of interest implicit in the lease. The rate of interest implicit in the lease is 8% per annum. Is eight percent per annum. Explain how this lease should be accounted for by the company. Explain how this lease should be accounted for by the company in accordance with the requirements of IFRS system. 
in accordance with the requirement of what? IFRS 16. Are we okay? In accordance with the requirement of what? IFRS what? 16. Now, ladies and gentlemen, shall we provide solution to this question? Now, they said payment is made in advance. Abby, Exactly, can tell you that the payment is going to be made in what? In areas. Are you getting me? Exactly. I will give you this same question. You are going to solve it as assignment as if the payment is made in what? In areas. Am I communicating? So ladies and gentlemen, let's put a solution to the question. We have the two things here. Uh, okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have year. The year is what? To what? 2019. And how many years are the business center going to be paid? How many years? Five years. Are we? Okay. Two hundred and nineteen. We have what? Two twenty. Are we? Two twenty one. Two twenty two and what? Two twenty three. Liability brought forward. That should be seen, or we call it open balance. Are we okay? Lease payment. We will have lease payment followed. Followed by that, we have what? Balance. After that, we are going to have interest what? Interest expense, and we have what? Liability. What is implicit interest rate? Eight what? Eight percent per what? Now let's don't forget. How are we going to recognize initial measurement of what? This liability. So we just calculate. Okay, like we have what? Uh, they say forty thousand is going to be paid in each year. Abby, you now say year. Year one, two, three, four. Are we okay? Forty thousand will be paid in what? In Alia, Abi, in, in the what in advance, Abi, aha, uh -huh. five. We have what cash flow 40,000. That thing will be starting in year zero. Are we okay? So, why do we pay in advance? We'll be starting with year, year zero, one, two, three, and four. Do you agree with me? We will now have 40,000 in each year, year, 40,000. 40. Are you with Ayuba? Now, what is implicit discount factor at what percent? This one is one zero point zero point zero point zero point. What do we have? Short point, zero point nine two six. Uh -huh. Zero point eight five seven. Well, you can calculate present value of annuity factor from year one to year four. 
You now multiply it by 40,000. It will be better. If, that's a short call of breed. Present value of annuity factor from year one to four. You use it to count 40,000. Hello, you Oga, you've muted yourself, sir. What? I didn't mute my mic. Hello? We can hear you. We can hear you, sir. The man is on drugs. <laughs> Okay, what do we have? Zero point one. Calculate present value of annuity factor from year one to four. Multiply it by what? By forty thousand. Add forty thousand of the year zero to it. Whatever we are happening there, that is the initial what? Initial recognition of what? Of the financial li of what? Of the liability. Lease liability. Initial measurement of lease liability. What do we have? What is present value of annuity factor from year one to four? You see it, he said. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. We have what? 132,480. 132,480. 85. 132,480. Okay. 132,480. Are you getting me? Are you with Ayuba? Yes, sir. Plus 40,000, what does he give you? What does he give you? 172,480. 172,480. 172,480. Abby, now yeah. listen, if you have 172,480 here, don't forget that in, at that year zero, you are going to pay the first 40,000. Yes. Uh -huh. You pay the first what? 40. So if you are going to pay the first 40,000, that means the opening balance here will not be 172,480. What will it be? It will be 132 forward. 132 forward. It is almost immediately that 40,000 will be paid. Am I communicating? Are you with Ayuba? So as a result of that, you will not have, you will have list payment here as nil. As what? As nil. Why we do it like that, I will tell you later. If you put 172,480 here, you now put 40,000 here. It will, amount to, it will amount to the same thing, but you can make a mistake later. You get me? Are you following me? Or yes, alternatively, you can do it this way. You can do it this way, you can say 172,480. So that the first payment will be here. You call it how much? 40,000. As a deduction. 172,480 minus 40,000. 130,480. 132,480. Are you with Ayuba? Are you with me? Now, what is 8% of 132,480? 10,598. 10,598. Sum these two together. This and this. Sum them together. What do you have? 143,078. One what? 
So 143078 is becoming we become opening balance here. So you have 143078. Out of this 143078, another 40,000 will be what? Be paid. Will be paid. What is the balance that you are going to be having? 103078. 1, 0, Interest is 8,246. Very good. 103. Uh -huh. 0, 108. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, that's good. Balance. The next one. Balance. Closing balance. balance. One, 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 three, two, four. Three, twenty-four. So we have one, 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 three, two, four here. We still have 40,000. And what do you have? 71,324. 71,324. And how much is the interest? 5,006. 5,706. 5, what does it give us all together? 71,000. 70, 30. 03. 70. That means this one will be what? 77,030. We have 40,000 here. Are we okay? What do we have as a balance? 37,030. 31. 37030. 030. What is going to be the balance here? What is going to make it to be what? To be 40,000. Are you getting it? Oh, yeah. What is 80% of 37030? Balance is 2,970. Nine, <laughs> 2,000. Nine, 970. So make it 40,000. Make it 40,000. Uh, 2,970. 2,970. And we have how much here? 40,000. So 40,000 will be the one opening balance here. And the payment will be how much? 40,000. Nail, okay. nail, nail. And that is the end of the question. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of 2019, we will recognize 143078 as a liability in the statement of financial position. Am I communicating? Why this one will be recognized at the end of 2020, at the end of 2021, at the end of 2022, before everything is now settled? Are we okay? Are we? Okay. Yes, sir. So that's how we prepare loan amortization, whatever. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see this, this interest that we are having here. These are the interest expense we are going to be recognizing in the income statement as finance charge. In each year. Are we okay? Yes, sir. Are you, are you back? Yes, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. What about the subsequent measurement for the right of use asset? What? The subsequent measurement for the right of use asset. What is the asset? The asset initially is 172 what? 172. 172 480. 480. As far as this question is concerned, we are not given depreciation rate. This is the amount you are going to be depreciating. Okay. Are you getting me? So 172 480 is the near chart measurement of what? Of the right of use asset. Are you getting it? And that is the amount you are going to be depreciating. Though we, I say this is the amount, that is because it is the only amount we are having. In this case, we don't have the smart pay cost. If you're having it, it could have been added. We don't have any other direct cost. It could have been added. We don't have initial deposit. It could have been what? As you can see that initial deposit is the 40,000 we have paid. Are you getting it? We have added that initial deposit with the present value of what? The present value of the lease liability. Okay, because the present value of the lease liability is this 132. Because are you getting me? We had in India deposit of forty thousand to it. 
Are you getting me? To arrive at 172,480. So that is the total amount we are going to recognize as asset. But in case we are now having any other one, let us assume that we have initial deposit that is quite different from that 172,480. It will be added. If you have any other direct cost, it will be added. If you have this monthly cost, are you getting me? This commissioning cost, it will, we are going to do what? Add FTP to, to arrive at the value of the asset that we are going to be depreciating. And don't forget, that amount is going to be depreciated over what? The useful life of the asset, are you getting me? We are the what? The VC is having a right of what? Of, to, of purchase option. Or we are the ownership is going to be transferred to what? To the VC at the end of the expiry period. Or alternatively, if the that, 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 VC does not have that price, it is going to be depreciated over the lower of what? Of the lease time and the lifespan of what? Of the asset. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? So note it. Note it. So, and that is the end of that question. Are we okay? So, over the lower of water. I said, we, we have it in the note already. The lower of the lease term or the lifespan of the asset. In, in, imagine a situation where the asset is going to span for six years. You now lease it under what? Under five years. And the leasing does not have any option to purchase the world, to purchase that asset. Neither does it have any world, any transfer of ownership at the end of the lease term. So that means the asset in question is going to be what? Uh, depreciated over how many years? Five years. Because five years is lower than what? Than the six years, which is the world, normal lifespan of that asset. Am I communicating? Am I talking? You should note the condition when we are going to use the lease time, provided the lease time is lower. That is where the world, the leasing does not have what option to purchase, or the, it, it does not have what the transfer of ownership at the end of what the lease time. Are you getting it? The asset is going to be depreciated over the lower of the lease time, or what, or the lifespan, or useful lifespan of what of the asset. At times, the lease time might be more than what might be might, might be what might be long, longer than what than the lifespan of what of the asset. Am I communicating? But that is a very real situation. We are by the this time will be longer than what than the lifespan of what of the asset. Am I communicating at all? It's a real situation. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are going to be showing at the end of the every reporting period in the world in the statement of what financial position as asset. This is what we are going to be showing as what finance cost in the world in the income statement. Am I communicating? Don't forget. Don't forget. Uh, this 40,000 that you are paying here at the end of every year, inter interest element is what? It's not embedded in this particular amount. If it were to be what? This is, is, it is part of the capital sum you are paying here. It is not interest element. Interest element is not embedded here. Why interest element is not embedded here? It is because you are paying it in what? In advance. Assuming that you are paying it in area, interest element will be what? Will be embedded in it. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Now, where you are having what? Where you have, if you are told in the question to pay it in what? In areas, you are going to have your year. You have opening balance. The next thing is what? Implicit interest. Just like we carry out amortization of what? Of financial asset liability. So we have what? Interest. After that, we have what? Repayment. And we have what? Closing what? Closing balance. Am I communicating? Just like you are going to treat it as the way we prepare amortization schedule on that what? On that financial instrument. Am I communicating? So that's how we are going to handle it. We are, you are told that the repayment is going to be made in what? In arrears. Are we okay? Are we okay? So know the template. We are, it is to be made in what? In areas. Are we okay? So ladies and gentlemen, let us rest a bit for this part before we now come back to the rest part of the lecture. So thank you. When are we coming back, sir? Let us come back by quarter to three. This is uh, two quarter after two. Sir, please, can you show the screen, please?
Disclaim. Yes, I'm not okay. done writing. Thank you, sir.
Deus é serioso e parado. É isso. Mas é de calor. Oh. 
Manas, no, 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 
Hello? 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 Salam Hello? 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 What kind of dragon is this? Hello. 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 Eh, mama, see you carefully, material. You want to be material. Okay. Eh, okay. Oh, <laughs> 
For the areas when the payment is made in Nigeria, you are starting with one seventy percent. Thank <laughs> you. 
No, Okay, Are you talking of um, the question we have? I mean, the presentation, or you are talking of the principle? They know I hear something. The fair value of that, I mean, the, that asset and the present value of the world of something, I'm the lower of the two, I'm not the But I don't think we fair value, you can Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let us continue now. Hello, I want to be walk out. Tim, wow, 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 
Gibson. Chez le Bible au bois. Ah! Tout pète. Eh bien, nous avons dit que nous avons dit que nous avons Go and feed before my say you people should be feeding. Where is it? It is on the platform. See, ask your colleague and tell you. Thank 
Tá com ele aí. Quem é o Alan? É para o Mônica Wayne, é o Golly. Mas ele ali se mete para ir lá no meio. Oh, yeah, 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 we are other people. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us continue. Actual student, inform others so that we start this class. I want to call. We've informed them they're not joining. Please let's continue. Thank okay. For that day, we'll join very soon. Thank you. 
Patch up students, check your WhatsApp. I sent something there now. Check your WhatsApp. I sent the material, it has 10 pages. What? It is. And you see, it belongs to me. We are doing. Have you seen it? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> yesterday we solved a question that I snapped and sent to you. I was searching for that question for the only I could not see that. I just discovered it now, and I included it as part of some questions that we have here. As part of those questions we have here, I think it is question number four. Question number one here, let's check it. Question number one here is Lago and Spine. If you check that flag one pine question, <laughs> I want you to check it. You think that it is the question that they are bringing this diet. So question number two, we have question number two there as well. B shape. A good question as well. Question number three, shape, angle and page. That is disposal that has consolidated statement for financial position. And question number four is the executive group. Are we okay? Question number four is what? Executive group. That question that we have done. We have done yesterday. Am I talking? That's question number four. I believe you have seen it. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, that's the question. And after that, we have share based payment, international financial reporting standard two. Share based payment, international what? Financial reporting standard two. We have notes there and we have questions as example. And at the same time, we have some other questions. The question that has solution is here. And we have other questions that don't have solution, which we can solve on our own. Let me tell you, I'm, I, I, we are not ending this revision program until I complete all this for you. Whatever you can do there today, we will do it. And by the time we start from 5 30 tomorrow, until we are tired. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I will complete all these ones are very small. I will complete all these. You get me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will appreciate it if we start with. Uh, we are conversant with the group financial statement. Though those other three questions we have, we have solved number four, but one, two, and three that we have there. I want us to solve the first one. Maybe we finish the first one before the rest two. 
we will move towards share based payment. And I believe we will finish the share based payment. Am I talking? We have not discussed how we are going to record the list in the book of what? In the book of list of. But it is simple. Are you getting me? Can we quickly complete that before we now move on to this other one? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's start. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's move to the book of who? Resource accounts. Resource accounts. <laughs> now, in the book of Lizard, how is the Lizard going to record this list transaction? Well, don't forget, there is one key thing under international financial reporting standards that I want you to appreciate. It is stated on IAS 16 that um, all assets, I mean, all leads, whether it is operating or finance, are you getting me? Uh, we are going to have what? The use of what? The asset. Are you getting me? And we are going to have the obligation, which is the liability. Are you okay? So that tells you that Lisa is going to see that what? that this transaction as well as receivable and any lease renter on it something like finance income on it is going to be seen in the income statement why the receivable element is going to be seen in the statement of financial position as part of current law current asset because they are expecting to collect something from who from the lease lease is expected to collect from what from the lease i think so it is directly opposite of what we have in the book of what of this author. other than the fact that this will not show show any, this will not show any assets the asset that this one is going to be shown is what the receivable what they are expecting to collect from who from the lessee am i communicating so now under okay let's put something down patrick student puts these things down in the next few minutes let's complete this before we now start other things ifrs 16 ifrs 16 requires that IFRS system requires that LISA should classify LISA should classify each of their leases. LISA should classify each of their leases at the inception date at the inception date at the inception date as either a finance list as either a finance list or an operating list as either a finance list or an operating list And these terms are defined. These terms are defined as follows. A, a finance list. Finance list. A finance list is a list that transfers substantially. This is a list that transfers substantially, that transfers substantially all the risks and reward, all the risks and reward incidental to ownership, all the risks and reward incidental to ownership Of an asset, of an underlying asset, of an underlying asset. An operating lease is a lease. An operating lease is a lease that does not transfer, 
that does not transfer that does not transfer all the risk and rewards incidental to the ownership of the asset. Are we okay? To stop. Now, leases of land and building. Leases of land and building. Leases of land and building. For a lease of both land and building. For a lease of both land and building. The land elements and the building elements should be considered separately. The land element and the building element should be considered separately. Are we okay? For the purposes of list classification, For the purposes of lease classification. So in a situation where you are given land and building, are you getting it? And you are given the work, the amount they are going to pay on it, you, they are, you need to separate them into what, land and what and building so that you allocate whatever the total value is between land and what and building. Okay. Uh, in such a case, the lease payments are allocated. The lease payments are allocated. The lease payments are allocated in proportion to the fair value. In proportion to the fair values, the lease payments are allocated in proportion to the fair value of the leasehold interest. Of the leasehold interest in the land element. In the land element and building element, in the land element and building element at the inception, at the inception. Leases of land, leases of land are classified are classified as either finance leases as either finance lease or operating lease lease of finance are classified as either finance lease or operating lease as other assets as other assets However, however, land normally has an indefinite economic life. Land normally has an indefinite economic life. And so, and so, a lease of land a lease of land cannot be for the major part of the economic life of the land. Cannot, cannot be for the major part of the economic life of the land. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what they are trying to say here is so far land does not have what definite lifespan. Are you getting me? You can't be you can't say that the least time on it is going to be for for the major part of the economic life. Like even if you have to be other asset, let's say it is equipment now that is leased. If equipment is going to span for 10 years, you can say you want to lease it for eight years. Are you getting me? 
So that that ATI is significant in the useful life plan of that work of that asset. That one is not applicable to land. Therefore, the fact that it is not applicable to land, land can be classified as either work finance list or what or operating list. Am I communicating? So, ladies and gentlemen, nonetheless, the risks and rewards, nonetheless, the risks and rewards incidental to the ownership of land. The risk and reward incidental to the ownership of the land can be transferred, can be transferred to a leasee, can be transferred to a leasee if legal title is expected to be transferred. If legal title is expected to be transferred by the end of the lease term, by the end of the lease term, or if the lease is for such a long period. If the lease is for such a long period, e.g., several decades, e.g., several decades, that, e.g., several decades in bracket, that the present value of the residual value of the land, the present value of the residual value of the land, the present value of the residual value of the land at the end at the end of the lease term at the end of the lease term is negligible is negligible Okay, recognition and measurements of finance list. Recognition of measurement of, of finance list. At the commencement date of a finance list, at the commencement date of finance list, the leaser is required to recognize the asset held. The leaser is required to recognize asset held. Under the lease, the leaser is required to recognize the asset held under the lease as a receivable, as a receivable equal to the net investment in the lease. Equal to the net investment in the world in the lease. Full stop. And this amount is initially measured. This amount is initially measured at the present value of at the present value of A. Now, listen, everybody. It is very simple and easy. Just listen to me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, assuming you buy and you have an asset, are you getting me? If you make use of that asset to generate future cash flows, and you are going to dispose of that asset at the end of its lifespan, are you getting me very well? What are you going to recognize as the what? As the present value of that particular asset. You will discount the cash flow you are going to generate, Ali, and you are going to discount the residual value. You have the total amount together, that's going to be the present value of that asset. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is how you are going to record, how you are going to calculate what? The initial amount of that receiving in the account. Whatever is going to be the one, the least payment that you are going to receive as a result of leasing your, out your asset, 
the cash you are going to receive here, that is the amount that you are now going to discount. What is going to be the scrap value of that particular asset at the end of its lifespan? You discount it also. You add everything together. Whatever you are now having there, that is what? That is the net investment or what we can see as the receivable amount you are going to recognize under the current, I mean, under the world, non current assets. Are you getting it? For what? For the, for the lease. Am I communicating? So that's why they say it is the present value of what? A. The lease payment is A. The lease payment receivable by the leaseor. 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 After the commencement date. After the commencement date. Plus B. The estimated residual value on the underlying asset. The estimated residual value of the underlying asset for the lease of, if any. At the end of the lease term. At the end of the lease term. Full stop. Note. Note, the discount rate used in this calculation the discount rate used in this calculation is the interest rate implicit in the lease. The same interest rate implicit that we are talking of, we are talking of. Is the interest rate implicit in the lease? Interest rate implicit in the lease. Full stop. Because of the way in which this rate is determined, because of the way in which this rate is determined, in which this rate is determined, because of the rate of the way in which this rate is determined, the net investment figure will be equal in amount. Sir, please come again. No, I'm fast. Because of the way in which this rate is determined, the net investment figure will be equal in amount. Will be equal in amount to the fair value of the underlying asset. To the fair value of the underlying asset at the commencement date at the commencement date less any payments received less any payment received from the lease on or before that date Are we okay? Or not before that date, plus any initial direct cost borne by the leaseor. Plus any initial direct cost borne by the leaseor. Plus any initial cost borne directly by what? By the leaseor. Initial direct cost borne by what? By the leaseor. Are we okay?
Subsequently, subsequently, the income element of each payment made by the lessee. Subsequently, the income pay element of each payment made by the lessee is recognized. Is recognized. Is recognized as finance income. As finance income. In the lease's statement of finance uh, statement of profit or loss. In the lease's statement of profit or loss. In the statement of what? Profit. Profit or profit or loss. Are we okay? The remainder of the lease payments, the remainder of the lease payments reduces the amount owed by the leasee. By the leasee. The remainder of the lease payment reduces the amount owed by the leasee. Who stop? The way, the way in which finance income, the way in which finance income is allocated to accounting period, the way in which finance income is allocated to accounting period, should give a constant periodic rate of interest. To give a constant periodic rate of interest on the lease's net investment in the lease. Of the lease's, on the lease's net investment in the lease. In the lease. Are we okay? At the end of the lease term, at the end of the lease term, the net investment figure will be equal. The net investment figure will be equal to any residual value, to any residual value of the underlying asset. of the underlying asset. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's take down this question to demonstrate the issue of what we saw. On 1st of January 2019, on 1st of January 2019, a Lisa company, a Lisa company, a Lisa company, which prepares accounts which prepares accounts to 31st December. To 31st December, buys a factory machine. 
buys a factory machine for 138,000 naira. For 138,000 naira. Are we okay? And immediately grant a three year finance lease of this machine to a DC. And immediately grant a three year finance lease of this machine to a DC. You can see a company buys an asset, immediately it buys an asset, it leases the asset out. Required lease payments are. Required lease payment are fifty thousand naira per annum. Fifty thousand naira per annum. This payment fall due on thirty first December two thousand and nineteen, two thousand and twenty, and two thousand and twenty one. These payments fall due on 31st December 2019, 2020, and 2021. 2019, 2020, and what? 2021. Good stop. After three years, After three years, the machine will return to the leaser. The machine will be returned to the leaser with an estimated residual value of 10,000 Naira. With an estimated residual value of 10,000 Naira. And a remaining economic life of less than one year. A remaining economic life of less than one year. Who stop? Who stop? The leaser's initial direct. The leaser's initial direct cost are one thousand three sixty. Much, sir. 1,360 Naira. And the interest rate implicit in the lease. And the interest rate implicit in the lease. Interest rate implicit in the lease. And the interest rate implicit in the lease is seven percent per annum. And the interest rate implicit in the lease is seven percent per annum. Are we okay? Explain how this lease should be accounted for. Explain how this lease should be accounted for by the leaser. Explain how this lease should be accounted for by the leaser in accordance with the requirement of IFRS 16. In accordance with the requirement of IFRS 16. Full stop. So that is the end of that question. Now, don't forget, on the 1st of January 2019, 
on the 1st of January 2019, this list is going to be what? It's going to be record night. Are we okay? It will be recognized at what? As the what, receive, the receivable amount is what we are going to recognize in the book of what? Of the list of. Am I okay? We recognize what? Receivable. Are we okay? Now, how are we going to recognize that receivable? We will recognize that receivable by calculating the what? The present value of the what? Lease rent charge and what? And the present value of the, the, the what? Residual value of that asset. And that is what you are, what we are going to recognize as well. The net interest, the amount, the receivable amount at the initial stage. Subsequently, we will need to calculate the interest implicit in that particular. Are you getting it? That the world, the owner is going to be receiving at the beginning of at, at the end of each period as finance income, together with what is going to be the remaining work received in the statement of financial work position. Are we okay? So let's now see the solution to that question. Now, on 1st of January 2019, on 1st of January 2019, on 1st of January 2019, that's the solution to the question. On 1st of January 2019, the leaser should recognize. The leaser should recognize a receivable which is equal which is equal to the present value the present value of the three lease the three lease payments The three lease payments and the residual value of the machine at the end of the lease. Are you with Ayuba? Now, let's and gentlemen. What is going to be the word, the receivable that will be equal to the present value? Now, let's now see the calculation, computation of the amount. How much is the lease payment? How much per annum? 50,000 Naira. So we'll be having, we'll having 50,000 Naira multiplied by present value of annuity factor from year one to year three. You see implicit interest rate of 7%. What does it give us? What does it give us? What is the present value of one to year three using one percent? Two point six. Two point six two. Two point six two. Six two four. Okay. Six two four. Six two four. Multiply it by fifty thousand. What do you have? One thirty one two one six. One thirty one two hundred. One thousand. Two hundred. One thirty one thousand two hundred. Are we okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, after this one, what is the scrap value? 10, what is this count for three? Year three? Zero point eight one six. Zero point eight one six.
What do you now have? 8,160. Sum the two together, what does he give you? 139,360. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the amount of receivable we are going to show in the day one, the commencement day. And don't forget the definition of the commencement day in accordance with that international financial reporting standard. Commencement date is the day that it was the visual transfer as of to the DC. Am I communicating? So don't forget it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, what we are going to do to calculate the world, the net investment, that's the word, to calculate the world, the um, receivable. Are you getting it? Now, ladies and gentlemen, after this, we can calculate what is going to be the annual interest received, finance income received by who? By the lease which will be going to the income statement as income. And what is going to be the balance of what? Of the liability that will be set to. Am I communicating? So to do that, we are going to prepare amortization schedule. Am I coming? We are going to use amortized cost to do that. So we have our year. Yeah. Year one, which is 2019, 2020, and what? 2021. So receivable. That is what? Opening balance. The opening balance here is 139, which is this total amount of the receivable. 139, 360. And we have finance income. Don't forget, implicit interest rate is what percent? 7%. We have lease payments. Lease payment is annual lease payment. Are we okay? And we have what? Receivable. What is our closing balance in the receivable account? Closing balance in the statement of what? Financial position at the end of each year. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh in each year this payment is how much 50 what 50 thousand so, 50, sorry. 50, 50, 50 and 50. are we okay now ladies and gentlemen what is seven percent of the opening balance nine seven nine thousand 755. 139, 360 plus 9755 minus 50,000, which is the lease payment. What do we have? Ninety-nine thousand one one five. Opening balance here with the word ninety-nine thousand one one five. What is seven percent of each? Six thousand nine three eight minus fifty thousand. Fifty what thousand? Fifty six thousand zero five. Fifty six thousand zero five three. The interest nine three thousand three thousand use nine forty seven approximation error so that. The balance we are going to have here will be 10,000 Naira, which is the residual value. Just find the difference between what? I mean. Remove this amount from 60,000 because we must have a residual value of how much? 10,000. And that is what we have been talking on the other time. So note it, everybody.
no treat. That is how we are going to deal with what finance leaves in the book of who in the book of Lisa. This is how we are going to be dealing with what finance leaves in the book of who. What of operating leaves? Operating leaves is very simple. Don't forget that the definition of the operating leaves is a type of we are this and reward are not what are not substantially transferred to the VC. So why it is not substantially transferred? That tells you that Lisa will still recognize loss. It as well as asset, and they are going to subject it to annual depreciation. The only thing that is going to concern them is what they are going to be receiving as rental income in their book, and that's for, for, for operating lease. Now, recognition and measurement of operating lease, everybody. Recognition and measurement of operating lease. Recognition and measurement of operating lease. If a lease is classified as an operating lease, if a lease is classified as an operating lease, the underlying asset should be shown in the lease or financial statement and depreciated as usual. The underlying asset should be shown in the lease or financial statement and depreciated as usual. The, the underlying asset should be shown in the financial statement and depreciated as usual. The lease payment made by the leasee, the lease payments made by the leasee, the lease payment made by the leasee, Are recognized as income. Are recognized as income. Generally, on a straight line basis, over the least time. Generally, on a straight line basis, over the least time. Who stop? Any direct cost incurred. Any direct cost incurred by the leaser. Any direct cost incurred by the leaser on arranging operating lease. On arranging operating lease should be added to the current amount of the assets. To be added to the current amount of the asset and written off and written off over the least time. And written off over the least time. And written off over the list of full stop. So that is the end of that. What? So that is the end of that. So ladies and gentlemen, so we can now proceed to other things. So like we have discussed this international accounting, financial reporting standard 16, I would just want you to go over that little things we have discussed there. You are going to gain a lot from that little discussion we have. So by now, even if they say something on this, you are going to have an idea of 
what you should put that. Even if you are not going to get everything 100, 100 if you cannot get 100 percent mark that is allocated to you. What? So most especially in this area of calculation. So it's not difficult at all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's step forward. I just sent the material to you. Let us look at the material. Hello? 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 Yeah. Hello? 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 I want be, I want be. We are there. I want to school. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's quickly look at this question. Let's solve this one. Immediately we finish this one, we are not going to discuss what? The International Financial Reporting Standard 2, which is shared being feeding. It's one of accounting standards that uh, can be tested at this level. Are we okay? Let's quickly look at this question. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the following draft statement of financial position related to Lagu, a public limited company, Fusion, a public limited company, and Spine, a public limited company, as at 8th November 2004. We have Lagu, Fusion, and Spine, all our figures. Non current asset, property plant, and investment, and equipment, investment in Spine, investment in micro. We don't have anything like micro here. There will be information on micro. Are we okay? Current asset, equity, call up share capital, share premium, retained earnings, all our figures. Non current liability, deferred tax liability, current liability, all our figures. Are we okay? The following information is relevant to the preparation of group financial statement. Lago acquired 90% of the share capital of Fusion and 26% of the ordinary share capital of SPY on 1st of December. 2003 in a share for share exchange when the retail earnings were fusion 136 million and span 30 million the fair value of net asset at first of december 2003 was lagu 650 million fusion 330 are we okay million and span 128 million any increase in the consolidated fair value of the net asset over the carrying value is deemed to be attributable to property held by the company. Is deemed to be attributable to what? Property held by what? By the company. Good question. The share for the share for share exchange in the purchase of future and spine on 1st of December 2003 had not yet been reported in Lago's book. Lago issued 150 million of its own share to purchase fusion and 30 million to purchase fine. There has been no new issue of share since 1st of December 2003. On 1st of December 2003, before the share for share exchange, the market capitalization of the company was 644 million. Lago, 310 million. Fusion, 
and what? 130 million span. B, in arriving at the fair value of the net asset acquired, At 1st of December 2003, Lago has not accounted for deferred tax arising on the increase in the fair value of property of both fusion and spine. The deferred tax arising on the fair value of the property was fusion, 15 million, and spine, 9 million naira. Fusion has acquired a 6% holding in the spine on 1st of December 2010 for a consideration of 50 million when the retail fusion had acquired a 60 percent holding in spine on first of December 2010 for a consideration of 50 million when the retail earning and resource of spine was how much 10 million the fair value of the net asset at the date was 80 million with the increase in the fair value attributable to the property held by what by the company property is depreciated within the group at five percent power per annum are we okay are we okay B, Lago purchased a 40% increase in my interest in micro. 40% interest in what? In micro. A limited liability investment company on 1st of December 2003. The only asset of the company is a portfolio of investment, which is held for trading world purpose. Which is held for what? Okay. The stake in micro purchase for cash. For cash for 11 million naira. The current value of the net asset of micro on 1st of December 2003 was 80 million, and the fair value was how much? 20 million. On 38th December, November 2004, the fair value of the net asset was 24 million. Lago exercised significant influence over micro. Micro valued the portfolio on mark to market world basis. Wow. E. Future has included the brand name in its property, plant and equipment, at the cost of 9 million. The brand earnings can be separately identified and could be sold separately from the rest of the business. The fair value of the brand at 30 November 2004 was 7 million. The fair value of the brand at the time of Future's acquisition by Lago was how much? 9 million. It is the group policy to value non control interest at its proportionate share of the fair value of the subsidiaries identifiable net require prepare consolidated statement of financial position of Lago Group at the year ended, 30th of February 2004, in accordance with the International Financial World, International Financial Reporting Standard. 30 months question. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us provide solution to this question. This is one of the type of the question that when you know it, in fact, we are okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as far as this uh, first part of the question, the beginning part of the question is concerned. Let us quickly do the necessary working. You will see that we have associated company. That micro is associated company. Yes. Uh -huh. The micro is associated company. You should note that. Am I communicating? Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's now provide answer to this question. First and foremost, let's read note one and understand it very well. In the note one, Lago acquired 90%. So that means we have... Today is Saturday. Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Dates. Today's date. 21. The question number one here. We have Lago, that is working one, working. Working one. Lago, that is group structure.
Lago acquire 90% of the ordinary share capital of Fusion. Lago in what? In Fusion. That means NCI will be what percent? And 26% of the ordinary share capital of what? Of what? Of fusion. Of spine. 26%. Are we? Yes. Now, Lago in spine. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's like there is acquisition of spine again. Lago in spine. What is Lago in spine? Twenty-six percent. Twenty-six percent. Are we? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's see another note. Here we have another acquisition. See. Fusion acquire, fine. Fusion acquired what percent? 60 percent. In what? In spine. Why Lago acquired what? They acquired 26 percent. 26 percent in spine. This is fishy. Are we okay? Lago yes. also acquire forty percent interest in what? Forty percent in what? Micro. That's uh, so shit. Am I talking? So you can see that this is a wonderful question. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us continue. Now, reporting dates. What is acquisition date? Reporting date. And what? Acquisition date. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is reporting date? Reporting date is very clear in the question. That is what? 30 See. November. 2000 and what? 2004. Okay. When did the Lago acquire interest in Spine? 1 December. Uh, 2003. Are we? Yes. That means post acquisition period will be what here? What? One year. What is acquisition date between future and spy? C. Year 2000. One, twelve, zero, one. Zero. Are we okay? Are we okay? Yes, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is post acquisition period here? Oh, yes. Four years. What does that indicate? That indicates that uh, it is on 30th November 2003, I mean, 1st of December 2003, that micro will become what? Will become the subsidiary to, to the parent. Yes. 
Spine, spine, no spine. To lago. To lago. That is why it becomes subsidiary to what? To lago. But to spine, it was a subsidiary right from when? Right from 112, year 2000. Am I communicating? So, ladies and gentlemen, let us continue. Walking through. Net asset of what? Of subsidiary. Net asset of subsidiary. We have two subsidiaries here. What are the subsidiaries? Fusion and what? Fusion spine. We have fusion and we have what? Spine. Reporting date. Acquisition date. Reporting date and what? Acquisition date. A million now, ladies and gentlemen, we have Sorry. Ordinary share capital. Share capital. How much is the share capital? One third. And 50 and what? 50. Share premium. Share premium 20, 20, 10, 10. Retain earnings. What is retain earnings? 138 and what? And 35. Is there any fair value adjustment in this question? Are you sure? Very good, very good. Let's read note one well. Large acquired 90% of the ordinary share capital of Fusion and 26% of the ordinary share capital of Spine on 1st of December 2003 in a share for share exchange when the retained earnings were fusion 136 million and spine are not 30 million the fair value of the net asset at first of december 2003 listen when the retained earnings were fusion 136 and spine are not 30. so we have 136 here and we have what 30 here are you following me Okay, the fair value of the net asset at 1st of December 2003 was Lago, 650 million. That is the parent. Fusion, 300 and what? 30 million. And Spine, 128 million. Any increase in the consolidated fair value of the net asset over the planning value is still to be attributable to what? Property held by what? By the firm. Now, fair value adjustment. property we don't know it but we are meant to know that the fair value of the net asset at first of december 2003 was 330 so this one is going to be 330 for fusion 
How much for what the other country? One twenty. You put one twenty eight here. Are you following me? Now, ladies and gentlemen, compare five fifty plus ten plus thirty. That is ninety. So that one twenty eight minus ninety. Thirty eight. Yeah. Thirty eight. So if your value gain here is thirty eight. That is one twenty eight minus ninety. Is it clear? One ten plus twenty. One one. Plus one thirty six. Two sixty six. Three thirty. Minus two six. What does he give you? Fifty four. Fifty four. Six four. Six four is the value game here. So thirty eight here, sixty four here as well. We are not told that it will be pre. Cheated. So that is the end of this. Are you with Aliba? Now, ladies and gentlemen, sum up everything. Okay. Ah, but what's not the essence of that depreciation rate that they gave us? Sum up everything. Where do they give you depreciation rate? Is it, is it if not one, where do you are given depreciation rates? No. That depreciation rate we are talking on, how many years are you going to, to, to make use of it on this asset? How many years? Let me see. Okay, that is not what? Let's see. Future has acquired 60% of the property, Abby. The fair value of the net asset at that day, with the increase in fair value attributable to the property held by the property is depreciated within the group at what year? Five what? Five percent per what? So that means we are given what? We are given number of years for the first time. Are we okay? Let's see the other company there. We are yet to complete it. I have seen another item. Return any under an acquisition date for this is how much? How much is retained any? How much is retained any? One word. 136. Okay. I've seen other items in the question, please. You go to note E. Fisher has included a brand name in his property, plant and equipment, at the cost of how much? Nine million. The brand earnings can be separated, separately identified and to be sold separately from the rest of the business. The fair value of the brand at 38 November 2004 was how much? Was how much? The fair value of the brand at the time of future acquisition by Lago was how much? Ladies and gentlemen, we have what? Future has included a brand in his property plan and equipment at how much? At nine million. Am I communicating? And so uh, it has been here. It's already part of it. Though by the time we want to be that statement of financial position, we need to separate brand from property plan and equipment because brand is in tangible asset. I must be separating what is closed. Am I communicating? So with that, we are going to add that under the statement of financial position. But however, however. We, the brand is already part of that. It is the fair value gain here that we are going to recognize. At the, the, fear, the fair value of the brand at the time of future acquisition was how much? Nine million. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is fusion. Abby, okay. For fusion, remove this. This one should be removed for now. This one is correct for spine, but for the fusion, don't forget that that brand is part of the book, Abby. So we will have what? Brand. Fair value gain. 
value of the brand at the time of the futures acquisition by Lago was how much? Was my name? Future has included the brand name in his property plant and at the cost of nine million. The brand earnings can be separately identified and could be sold separately from, from the rest of the business. The fair value of the brand at 30th November 2004 was how much? Seven million. The fair value of the brand at the time of fusion acquisition by Lago was how much? Nine million. This is not fair value game, but the entire amount of the fair value. But don't forget, it is already part of property plant and equipment. It's already part of what? So that means it is already part of what we have in the world, in the statement of financial position there. So by the time they are now consolidating, there is going to be a reduction of how much? Of two. At, at, at what? At reporting this. You get it. So we don't have anything on that brand at acquisition days. Because that fear value has already been used. But it is reducing value at what day? At reporting date. By how much? By two. Nine as against seven is what? Is two. So that two reduction there should be taken here as a deduction. This is not gain. This is the entire amount of the world of the brand, which is already part of the statement of financial position. Am I communicating? It's already part of what? The statement of financial position. Listen again, he said, Future has included a brand name in his property plant and equipment at the cost of nine million naira. So it's already part of the world. That nine million is already embedded in the world, in the property plant and equipment of what? Of Future. Am I talking? So note it. So the fair value of the brand at 30th November was how much? Seven million. But when it was acquired, it was how much? Nine million. And it was already part of the book we have there. So it is only a reduction in it that we are going to recognize, which we are going to remove when we get to the statement of what? Financial position. When we, because you should not match a tangible asset with what? With tangible asset. You have to separate intangible from what? From the tangible. Am I coming? So it was separate disclosure in the statement of financial work position. So that is for that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, how much do we have for the property? So let's see any other one there that needs that adjustment. Somebody call our attention to a, uh, a depreciation rate. Note what is that? Note C. Future has acquired a 60% holding span for a concentration of 50 million. When the retained any reserve of span was 10 million naira. The fair value of the net asset at that date was how much? 80 million. With the increase in the fair value attributable to the property held by what? By the company. Property is depreciated within the group at what? At five percent power. Property is depreciated at five percent power. So when they say property is depreciated within the group, that is telling you that these two will be subjected to what? Depreciation because within the group, when they say within the group, whatever the property they have, it will be subjected to what? Will be subjected to what? Depreciation. Are we okay? So let's get to that. Let us calculate depreciation on the what? Depreciation on this property. Depreciation on property. Brand. What is going to be the depreciation? How much is the fair value adjustment we have for property? Okay, this one is 64 here. Are we okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is now depreciation rate? Five what? Five percent. Are we okay? Five percent. Five percent of uh, what and what? Five percent of 38, five percent of 64. What? Of what? Of 64. 3 point what? 3 point. 3 point 2. Wait, of 64 is 3 point 2, Abby. Are we okay? Of 38. 1.9. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. It is one more year. Why it is one more year is because that other 
I mean, the the two subsidiary, the other subsidiary, IMF, Spy, Fusion. When was Fusion acquired by what? By Lago, first of December, just one year, Abby. And that is when the other entity will become a subsidiary as well. Are you getting it? So our post period is going to be based on what? On one year, as far as this one is concerned. Am I talking? Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next one. I can see another thing there, note B. In addition to the fair value of net asset acquired, at 1st of December, Lago has not accounted for different tax arising in the use of the fair value of the property of both what, fusion and spine. The different tax arising of the fair value of the property was fusion, how much? 15 million. And spine, how much? So they have calculated different tax. They have given it to us. And you know, the fair tax on the fair value of the asset is going to be what? What will it be? That is a liability. So you now have what? Different tax. Different tax. How much is different tax here? 15? Fifteen and what? And nine. Fifteen, nine as a deduction. What do we now have? We could have deducted that 15 and 9 if they said they have adjusted for them before they arrive at the net asset. But we are told that they have not been, are you getting me? They have not been dead with before they arrive at that net asset. Am I talking? So, what do we now have? Get the figure, please. Retain any under what? Under one thirty-eight. Okay, it was erased. One thirty-eight. Okay. What is it? 311.8 followed by 315. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 122.1 and 81. And what? 81. Eh? No, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. That lies. Okay. How do we have 315 up here? How do we have 315, please? One ten plus 20 plus 136 plus 64. What does that give us? One ten plus 20 
plus 136 plus 64. How will you give us 330? Huh? 330. Okay, we have 330 up there as the fair value. Okay, no problem. Uh -huh. Okay, what of this one? At the reporting days for spine, what do we have there? At the reporting date for spine, we have. I want to 2.1. What of acquisition date? Acquisition date is 119. 119. Now, ladies and gentlemen, post acquisition. Yes, sir. This one is loss. Why this one is profit? Are we okay? What is post auction loss? 3.2. Why this one is how much? What? 3.1 million. Are we okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, working three. Computation of goodwill. We have two companies, Fusion and what? And Spine. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's come back to no, what working one here. Lago is having 90%, Abby. Why NCI is 10%? That one is not the problem. But as far as um, this entity is concerned, Fusion, Lago, direct interest, direct. Infusion is what percent? 20 what? Lago indirect interest will be what? 90% of 60. 60. What does it give you? 50. 26 plus 54. 80%. Eh? 80%. Non controlling interest is what percent? 20%. Is it clear to you? So, this is what we are now going to work on. Now, we have purchase consideration. Lago infusion. Let's go up to get the purchase concentration for that. The share for share exchange on the purchase of future and spine on 1st of December has not yet been recorded. Lago issue 150 million of its own share. To purchase fusion 30 million uh, to purchase fusion and 30 million to purchase what to purchase fine are we okay fine there has been no equal so that we will just say 150 million multiply by before the share for share the market capitalization of the companies wow on on first of, there has been no new issue of shares since first of december 2003 on first of december 2003 before the share for share exchange the market capitalization of the company were how much 654 million for lago 310 million for world fusion and 130 million for world for span as far as the purchase function we want to determine here is concerned it is the parent company share price that is relevant here so what is the number of the Ordinary share capital of the parent. 
What is it? 280. Are we? The five sees 44 million by 280 to no market price per share. To what? 2.3. So that means market price per share. Lago market price per what? Per share will be equal to what? 644 million defined by how many number of shares? 280 million. Give us what? Two naira 30 couple. Are we okay? So that tells you that multiply by one naira and multiply by what? One naira 30 couple. The first one naira is what? Nominal. Why the balance of one naira 30 couple is what? Share premium. What does he give us? 150 and what? 195. 195. 195. 195. Okay. Is this one clear? What was fine? Lago in spine and 30 million shares to spine you have 30 million times one naira times one naira 30 cobo in spine what does he give us Thirty million and what? Is it clear to you up to this point? Okay. Fusion in spine. Fusion had acquired sixty percent of the spine on first of December for a consideration of how much. Fifty million. Now, ladies and gentlemen, indirect holding adjustment. This will be equal to ten percent. Of how much? Of fifty million. What is 10% of 50 million, everybody? Five. This will be what? Will be removed. Are you with Ayuba? Okay. So the next thing is to consider what? Non controlling interest non-controlling interest will be 10 percent of 315 what is 10 percent of 315 and we have what 20 percent of 119. Are we okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, we sum this together and we deduct net asset. One fifty plus one ninety five plus thirty one point five. What does it give us? Three seventy six point five. Three seven six point five as against three one five. 
30, 39, 50 minus 5, 23.8. 137.8. One three seven point eight as against one one nine. What do we have? For spine, we have one eighteen point eight. Eighteen for spine for spine. Eighteen point eight. Uh -huh. And the other one, we have 61.5. 61. 61.5. This one is negative. Are we? No. Came from? The both are both. The both are both. It's not negative. Ah, good, good, good. Good. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of what? Of working three. Working for net assets, non controlling interest, For non-controlling interest, we have NCI at acquisition date. Fusion, how much? 31.5. Fine. 23.8. Are we okay? Post acquisition NCI. Fusion 10% times 3.2. What does it give us? Spine. 20% times 3.1. Give you what? Eh? Indirect holding adjustment. How much? Five. Working five. Working five. Shall we continue? Consolidated retained earnings. Are we okay? For consolidated retained earnings, what do we have there? Parents. Lago. Lago is the parent. One what? One twenty. After that, we have the next company. Post acquisition from subsidiary. The first subsidiary is what? Fusion 
How much? 90% of 3.2. What does he give us? And we have pi. 20% of 3.1. Be 80%, I mean, not 20%. 80%, sorry. 80%. That's slip of mouth. Of tongue. 80% of 3.1. 2.48. 2.48. Are we okay? What other thing do we have there? Associate. Profit from associate. Working six. So we have. Investment in associate. Investment in associate. We have costs of investment. If you check statement of financial operation, we have 11 there. But let's check additional information. That is the cost of investment in micro. So let's see note, note one, note B. Lago purchase a 40% interest in micro, a limited liability investment from on December 4th. The only asset of the company is a portfolio of investment, which is effort to stay in the world. The micro was purchased for cash of how much? 11 million. The current value of the net asset of micro on 1st of December 2013 was 18 million. And their fair value was how much? 20 million. So that means there is a change in the fear value of that net asset, which is a profit they have made. Which is a profit. Are we okay? Now, um, on 30th November 2004, the fear value of the net asset was how much? 24 million. When was it acquired? 4th of December. The fear value at that date is how much? 18 million. When was the reporting date? Eh? Time and, for, and the fair value was how much? Eh? So profit. 40% of 24 million minus what? 18 million. What do you have? Two point four. Two point four million. Listen very well. The current value of the net asset of micro was how much? Sorry, there is a mistake. I I erroneously pick what current value instead of fair value. Current fair value is how much? Twenty million. Okay. Yeah. And what do we have? Forty percent of four. 1.6. 11 plus 1.6. What of this one? So ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of uh, this. Sure the workings for NCI. I just want to take a picture. The working for NCI. Mm, thank you. You have not got the total amount for NCI. How much is the total amount for NCI? 50. Fifty point six. What of consolidated retained earnings?
121.2 Sir, profit from associates is 12 points. What? How much is profit from associates? Shall we step forward? Yeah. And that's the end of that beautiful question. Shall we consolidate? What is the name of the parent? As a thirty eighth November two thousand and four. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have property, plant, and equipment. Property, plant, and equipment. non-current asset, PPE. We'll be having what? 329 plus 185 plus what? Minus nine. That is brand that we are going to separate. It is intangible. It must be separated from tangible. Because it has already been included as part of what those assets. Am I talking? Okay. The next one. Let's go to the fair value adjustment. Working through property sixty four thirty eight minus depreciation plus sixty four plus thirty eight minus three what three point two minus one point nine. What do you have? Goodwill. Brand. Investment. In associate, how much is goodwill? Working three, goodwill, sixty one point what? 
61.5 loss, 18.8. Brand, 9 minus 2. Investment in associates, okay? Give us the figure here. Six six five point nine. Seven six five. Six six five point nine. Six hundred and sixty five point nine. Okay. The next one. Eighty point three. Point three. Yes. This one is seven point zero. Investment in associate. How much? Current asset. Current asset. Wow. One twenty plus fifty eight plus what? Plus 40. No further adjustment. Fine. What do we have? What? To sum everything together. Nine, nine, nine eighty three. Share capital. We will have two eighty. Where is working two? I mean, working three. One fifty and thirty. Plus one fifty plus thirty. Give me us how much? For what? For sixty. Share premium. Share premium is some um, thirty. Plus 195 plus 39. 30 plus what? 195 plus 39. 195 plus 39. How much does it give us? 264. Consolidated retail earnings. So how are we consolidating the share capital? It's not supposed to just be 280. We're adding, we adding the share exchange. And share yes. premium. Yes. Share exchange, that's what we're adding to it. Yes. When new shares are issued, it has to be added to the existing one. When it has not been accounted for, we are only the question that it has not been recorded. To record it, that means they have to be added. Are we okay? To record it, they have to be what? Added. Am I talking? Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is the consolidated retail earnings that we have in working five? One twenty one point two. One twenty one point two. One two one point two. And that will give us shareholders fund. How much is the child that's on here? Eight forty five point two. What's that? Eight four five point two. Not controlling interest. How much is non controlling interest? 
50. Fifty point six. Fifty point six. Non current liability. Do we have? The fat tax. What is the fat tax here? Plus plus and eh? a plus five plus five eh? plus what again 15 and nine plus nine what do we have Sixty nine, and we have current liability ten plus five plus four. Give me us what nineteen. Let's see what we have there. Nine eighty three point eight. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of that question. May God guide you. May God lead you in the exam. May God empower you. Your question, please. You raise up your hand. Somebody wants to ask a question. Okay. Please, how do you know um, that was a deferred tax liability? How do we know? Is a deferred tax liability. How do I know it's a deferred tax liability? I know because I read it in the question that it is a deferred tax liability. You can check, go and read it. Note what? Note, note B. B. In arriving at the fair value of the net asset acquired at 1st of December 2003, Lago has not accounted for the deferred tax arising on the increase in the value of the property. When there is increase in the value of the property, are you getting me? That increase is going to lead to a payment of tax. Payment of tax is what? Is like a if it is increased, it will be deeper tax asset. Are you with me? Yes. And I just find that this can be tested in what in the exam. Don't be scared of it. Sir, sorry, okay? I have a question. Your question. On that fact that you just explained. So if it is um if it is different tax asset, are we to treat it this same way we have treated it in the net, net asset? We are going to treat it this way, instead of the doctrine we are adding, if it is different tax asset, and we are going to disclose it to the calculation as different tax asset, except for when you have different tax liabilities in the book that are in excess of that asset, that is when you can set up. We have the opportunity of setting off different tax assets and different tax liability balances in the account. Am I talking? Are you okay? Yes, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on to share this payment. So it is just five, and we are ending our lecture today by seven because of the time we have lost in the morning.
I will want you to attend question number two on your own. It is still very similar to what we have done, but with lesser adjustment. It is similar to it with lesser adjustment. It is still this shape. Question number two. Forward your solution to me for marking. Sir, sir, sorry, please. I have a question. I'm so sorry for what that. is your question about this? Um, the factors that you just explained now. You said if we have um a different tax asset already in the question in the balance sheet that they, that was given to us, and in the in this additional information, now it now results into as we now have different tax liability, you are talking about set off. So I don't really get how we can do the set off. Can you please just Maybe a little bit of explanation or example. When you have 10 Naira assets and you have 3 Naira liability, 10 Naira minus 3 Naira. 7 Naira. 10 Naira minus 3 Naira. 7 Naira. 7 Naira. When you ask a question, and I am trying to simplify the answer, and you don't answer it again. Eh? 10 naira minus 7, seven naira is yeah, minus, seven seven naira minus seven 3 naira. 7 naira. Seven naira. Seven naira. So that 7 naira, that is excess of asset. That is what you are now going to use. Set off is to deduct one thing from the other. Are we okay? Set off is to deduct one item from the other item, if they are similar items. And there is a right of setting off. Because in accounting, there are some items that which we are not allowed to do what to set up. Let us say, for instance, you have cash balance and you have bank overdraft. You are not expected to set off cash balance with what? With whatever the overdraft you might be having. The simple rule guiding there that is for transparency. Transparency. Transparency in what sense? Transparency in the sense that we want to know the amount of liability you have in our side. I want to know the amount of asset you have in the outside. But when we are talking of amount of asset and amount of liability, a tax authority is a tax authority, but we have different banks. You may be having cash balance in one bank and you're having bank overdraft in what? In another bank. When you say the two of the impression you are creating is like you don't owe any bank any money. Are you getting it? And one of the goals that international financial reporting wants to achieve is transparency. To the to I mean to the core, they want you to be transparent in whatever you are presenting in the statement and your financial statement. So by the time you are now setting up some assets that you are not permitted to set up in the world in the international financial reporting standard, that means you are not transparent. Am I communicating? But when it comes to just like what we normally have under international accounting standard 19, where we can set up the Present value of the fine obligation against the value of land assets under international financial uh, international accounting standard 19. We can set off fair value of war of land assets against what present value of war of the fine obligation to know whether we are going to have liability or asset at the end of the day. The one that is in excess is the one we are now going to reflect. We are the fair value of the plan asset, it's more than the present value of the defined obligation at the end of the day. We'll be having what um, defined asset. Are you get, we are going to be having what asset. Are you getting me? So if the liability is more, we are going to be having what present value of what of defined obligation. Are you getting me? So no cheat. So and as far as tax is concerned, this issue of um different tax and asset different tax liability, we have the world in, under international accounting standard 12. We have every dual, every right to do what to set up the two against each other. I think we saw one question. We have solved one question in this division program. We have we set off what um, liability. This one defined tax asset against defined tax liability. We have solved one question in this division program. We have we treated it like that. So we have excess of what excess of liability eventually. Am I communicating? So if you can refer back to some of the questions we have solved in this division program, you are going to come across something like that there. Am I talking? Thank you, sir. Now, let's and let's continue. Now, International Financial Reporting Standard 2, share-based payments, share-based payments, IFRS 2. How many of you have done share-based payment before? 
Do we have anybody that has done share based payment before? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, sir. Have you done share based payment before? Just an idea. You have an idea. Good. Can you please educate us on the little idea you have on the share based payment? Can you kindly educate us? Oh, no. <laughs> ah, why no? Time, my log, I can continue. No, I give you two minutes. Hello. Say whatever you know on share based payment under two minutes. Whatever you can say on it. Under two minutes. Two minutes should not be too small for you. <laughs> Uh, it's, I think share based payment is when an entity is trying to settle their obligation with issue of shares. Okay. And they can also use it as a source of finance too. So, which can be done by, which can be equity settled or cash share, uh, settled. It, it, can, it, it can as well be a source of finance. Are we? Yes. Okay. That is the area I will start my logic. Uh, in, 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 in what way is it going to be a source of finance? It's How a can of finance. The share based payment does it involve movement of cash? Does it involve movement of cash? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us discuss share based payment. Let us discuss it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what do we mean by share based payment? For those of you that are doing strategic finance share management, one of the ways by which the company should ensure that the company achieves the management, the director achieves go congruence, a situation where there will be harmonization of what of objective, which we mean by go congruence, is by deciding to come, the company will decide to compensate the director of the company or the employees of the company. Not through by card, but by issuing shares for them when they are able to meet certain what certain target that is set for them. So rather than for them to give for the business to give them cash, they can be awarded by allocating shares of company to them. Does that involve movement of cash? No. But by the time they have now got the share in the company, uh, the belief is that they will be more committed. Because they have become shareholders in the company, they will be more committed to run the company. Are you getting me? They have also become the shareholders in the business. So what they have become the shareholder, so what they are now going to strive to achieve is maximization of shareholders' wealth. Because when they run the company successfully, they are also maximizing their own wealth, their own wealth. Am I communicating? No. Uh, that is, and uh, we refer to that as well, executive share option plan or executive share option scheme. Under International Accounting Standard 33, we talk of what? Option. Issuing shares out, giving them what? You know, they say, okay, I exercise this price. Exa buy this share at a low amount. That means a certain number of shares will be given to them as free. You get me? That is the option there. So option does not involve movement of what? Movement of, uh, of cash. You get me? Because the free, and the free one that will be issued to them, Something like that is what this issue of what share option is looking at. Direct, we have employees of the company may work for the company, but the, for, the, for the fact that they work for the company, they can be compensated with bonus in cash. They can be compensated with some other thing that can be made that has connected value. But rather to compensate them by giving them cash, company may decide to do what to issue shares to them. We have some organizations where their employees are also having shares in those companies. I can cite many examples of what of uh, some of the public companies we have in Nigeria here. We are, we are going to have some of the staff that are still the shareholders in what in the company. And when they are shareholders in the company, they will not want such company to do what to die. They will not want such company to do what to run at a loss. Are you getting it? Because they know that whatever they do, they will be affected not even indirectly, but directly. Because at the end of every year, if companies should make good profit, they know that their own dividend is going to be worse. Ah, uh, bogus. 
am I communicating? So, and that is exactly what the what the intention of the international financial reporting standard to do what to develop international financial reporting standard on the what on this share based payment. But when we are talking of the share based payment, we have three aspects of it to it. It is the two aspects that we have in the world in the exam. If we see a it is two aspects. We have share the one that is going to be paid by Shia, the one that we are happy, the one that's what it's going to be paid by Shia, where it is going to be based on what on cash. Are you getting me? We have cash what cash based what share based payment. Are you getting me? So that is just the introduction to what to the topic. I might communicate that is the introduction to that topic. So it is on page five, I mean, page six to page 10 of the material that I gave to you today that I sent to you today. So let's quickly see what we have there. The objective of international financial reporting standard two, share based payment. You know why I love this international financial reporting standard? I will tell you. I could say that this international financial reporting standard happened to be my savior in 2005. May, June 2005, when I wrote my final defo in ACCA. It was my savior. In that diet, this particular accounting standard was developed by International Accounting Standard Board and it was released in what 2024. This shared based payment and it was tested by ACC in 2000, I mean, 2004 and it was tested in what in 2005. You get me? And you know, in the diet, it was tested, there was no calculation there, they just tested surely part of it. Surely, I read the benefits, I read this, I read that. So when I got to the examination or I, I came across it as 20 math questions and I was able to do well on each. You get me? Because question number one, group financial statement that I thought I would use to Buga just said me in that guy. I spent one hour, five minutes on question number one. I was unable to finish it. I abandoned it. So let us continue. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the objective of FIRS 2 share based payment is to prescribe the accounting treatment of payment made, made by an entity in the form of shares. Payment that is made by entity in the form of shares. Or that payment by, can be made in cash. That's what I'm telling you the other time. If it's not made in cash, the cash that is going to be paid is not going to be based on the market price of the share. The price that the cash that we pay will be based on what the market price of the share. You see that they issue out shares or they determine the market what what is going to be the worth of that share. They now give cash value. Cash, are you getting me? Instead of that, you issue out shares. Am I communicating now in the form of shares, including share options or B in cash? We are the amount of cash payable depends upon the company's what share price. Am I communicating? So that is what we mean by what? Share based payment. The payment that is going to be put to you is going to be based on share. We cannot give you that exact share, or we use share to calculate the cash we give you. What is it? Are we okay? Somebody can render a service to you. You can say that I'm not giving you cash. I will be issuing share to you, share based payment. Now, as simple as that, somebody has rendered service to you. You get me very much. Let us assume that somebody has repaired your car. Am I talking? For you to get the accounting entry, this accounting standard is very interesting accounting standard. To get the accounting entry now, somebody has rendered service to you. Let's say somebody has repaired your car. If somebody has repaired your car, car repair accounts is going to be debited. By the time you are now issuing shares out, what is going to be credited? Share capital. That's all. You get me. Actually, it is very, it's a very simple accounting standard. You see that you debit one account, you credit another one. That's it. And if it is cash based, okay, if you repair my car for me, that car repair is going to be debited. Why liability account is going to be credited if you have not paid it? By the time you pay it, cash account is going to be credited. So it's a very simple standard. We don't have more than debit this and credit that under this accounting standard. But the issue there is the calculation. So you are not going to see when we continue. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
Share this payment could be made in exchange for any goods or services received. So I want you to be noting the principle there. Share this payment could be made in exchange for any goods or services received by an entity. But the emphasis in this chapter is on share this payment made to all to employees. So listen attentively. So that is why at times, anytime we are discussing International Arrangement Standard 19, what you are going to see that they will say, IAS 19, short-term employee benefit, long-term benefit, post-employment benefit, termination benefit, IFRS. Yeah, this payment is outside the scope of International Accounting Standard 90 because as far as International Accounting Financial Reporting Standard 2 is concerned, it is still a compensation to whom? To employee. So share based payment can be paid in for any transaction. But the focus of the international accounting standard, financial reporting standard too, is to make use of it to do what to compensate for employees. Am I communicating? Am I talking? So let's and gentlemen. Um, but the emphasis in this chapter is on the world, on the share based payment made to work to employees. In this situation, it is important to distinguish between the dates. So those are the things you need to note in the accounting standard. It is important to distinguish. I don't know whether they have snapped this question. Anytime it's not a question, I take share your snap this one. When you are complete, when you complete this page, let me know so that I navigate to the other page. It is important to distinguish between the date on which an entity employee agreed to a shared based arrangement. The day that the en employee entity's employee agreed to the shared based arrangement, we call it grant date. What do we call it? Grant date. The grant date. The grant date is the day in which an entity in which an entity and employee agree to a shared based arrangement. Grant date. We will issue some shares to you. Are you getting me? We are going to accept. The other day they enter into an agreement is the grant date. And the date on which the employee become entitled. So the day that the employee is going to become entitled to those shares will be a future period. Maybe after they have met certain criteria. Am I communicating? So the day they are going to be entitled to receive that particular shares. Are you getting it? What do we call it? Birthday or first thing date. So, and the date on which the employee becomes entitled to receive the payment concern is the first thing date. So, these two days are very important under international financial reporting standards. So we have grant date and we have what? First thing date. A few snap this one, ladies and gentlemen. Should I navigate to the next page? Quickly snap this page. Hello? I want you to be doing similar one. Come on, done. Done, okay. The next one. Done. Done? Last but not least. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have been able to know the difference between the grand date and what and first thing date. I mean, now. The first thing they, the employee will normally have to satisfy certain festing conditions during the intervening world period, vesting period. Now, when we are talking about the festing period, can somebody tell me what we mean by festing period? Festing period is the world, is the period in between the grant date and what and festing date. That is festing period. There will be certain conditions that the one employee could do or to meet. Am I talking? So note it. To be eligible for what? For the payment. The main requirement of International Financial Reporting Standard 2 in relation to employee, to share this payment to employee are as follows. Now, in the case of payment, in the case of payment, we take the form of equity issues. 
shares or share option. The entity should measure the fair value of the equity instrument at the grant date. Listen, all of you, I want you to note this and you should write it out. In the case of, you know, I told you that it can be share that will be issued, it can be cash that is going to be based on the share price that will be given. So if it is here, how are we going to know the measurement, the measurement of the amount that will be paid? So in the case of payment, we take the form of equity instrument that is share or share option. The entity should measure the fair value of each equity instrument at the grant date. Note it. For share issue, share-based payment. Share-based payment. Fair value of share at which date grant date notice that's the principle you might be given fair value of share at the end of each reporting period after the grant date you should be you should not be particular with those who fair value of what of the share at the end of every reporting period after what after the grant date your focus should be the fair value of the share at which date the grants the under what or in the, under a situation whereby the compensation is going to be paid in form of what here for share am i talking once made this measurement is fixed it is what it is fixed and it's not adjusted and it's not adjusted to reflect any changes in share value or share option during the world during the first season regardless of the changes in the mark in the fire in the market price of share after that particular day you ignore Am I talking? Am I? It is then presume that employees concerned will render services to the entity during the first period period in order to hand their share based payment. Therefore, the cost of providing such payment is written off as expense over that period with a corresponding increase in what? In equity. With a corresponding increase in what? This will involve the use of an equity account entitled share to be issued. Or something or similar. So far, those shares are yet to be issued. You get me? We don't call it ordinary share capital. It can both other components of equity or share to be all share to be issued. Telling you that ordinary share capital, this one, this account is going to be credited. Have you? We are what is going to be debited. The expense will be debited. As simple as that. Am I communicating? Expense is going to be debited. Share capital with the world will be credited. That the share to be issued a car with the world, or you call it other component of world of equity, the part of the world credit. So under this situation, debit expenses account and credit world credit share to be issued account. Or you can call it what other equity word component OEC, other equity word component. See, okay, therefore, the cost of providing is written up. This will involve the use of an equity account entitled share to be issued or what something similar. Now, see, estimate of number of equity instruments to be issued on the first thing they may vary. During the first thing period, as employees satisfy or fail to satisfy the first thing condition, such changes are accounted for prospectively in accordance with International Accounting Standard 8, accounting policies, changes in accounting estimate, and all and errors. Are we okay? D, any remaining balance seized on the share to be issued account after, after first thing has occurred must remain in equity but may be transferred to another component of what? Equity. This will occur if employee who satisfy the first thing condition and receive share option then decide not to exercise those work, those options. In the case of share-based payment, which are to be settled in cash, yes. Share-based settled in what? Settlement in cash. Hello, for the share payment that is going to be settled in cash. Yes. 
there may be a change in the fair value of what of that share at the end of every reporting period to determine that amount of cash that will be paid it is the change in the fair value at the end of every reporting period that we are going to base our calculation on if the payment is going to be made in what in cash let's see what we have here in the case of share based payment which are to be set in cash the entity should measure this liability at the fair value at the grant date that will be the first one and then remeasure the fair value of the liability at each reporting day during the first three period. So this one, it is at the end of every reporting period that you are going to be remeasuring what the fair value. Am I talking of the liability? Any changes in the fair value during accounting period are recognized in the calculation of the entity's profit or not for what for that period, as in the case for equity settlement based payment. The cost of providing cash settled share based payment is strictly off to an expense of an expense over the world over the first thing period. So under this particular one, don't forget, under this one, the fair value. Fair value should be based on what? On fair value at what? Grant day. Okay, we have written it already. Fair value at grant date. And this should remain unchanged. And this should remain unchanged over the first thing period. Over the first thing period. Am I communicating? Now, for the settlement in cash, fear value of shares at grant date and fair value of shares at the end of every reporting period during the what the vesting period we debit expenses account And we credit liability. So why it has not yet been paid is the liability we are going to credit under this cash settlement. And I communicate, ladies and gentlemen, that is what you need to do uh, to carry out your calculation under what under share based payment. And I communicate. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's now see stop, uh, this example here. On first of January two thousand and nineteen, a company which prepares account on thirty first December grant five thousand shares option. A company which prepares a can to example three a company which prepares a can to 31st December grants 5,000 shares option to each to 12 of his senior employee. That means you'll be talking of 5,000 multiplied by what multiplied by 12. That is the total grants that is given to the employee. The fair value of one share option at listen so 31st December grant five four on first of January 2009. A company which prepares account to 31st December grant 5,000. Which date is grant date? Fourth of January. It is the fair value on that fourth of January you are going to be searching for. So now the fair value of one share option. At January 2009, is how much? Nine naira. The specified first thing day is what? 31st December 2021. 2021. That's two years. I mean, that is three years after. Three years after. And the grant is conditional upon the achievement of certain performance target by that word, by that date. Certain performance target by that word, by that date. So let's continue. On December 2019, it is estimated that all 12 of the employees will achieve their work performance target by the work by the first thing. Date. However, by 31st December 2020, this estimate has fallen to 11 employees. And in fact, only 10 of the employees actually achieved their target by 31st December 2021. Show how this transaction should be treated in the company's financial work statement. Beautiful, wonderful question. 
So let's and gentlemen, I love it. So this is a kind of question that can be tested at this level. Let me tell you if something like this is tested, and you have never come across it before. You just think that it's a big question. Honestly, if you know it, it's a question you can solve under three minutes. It's a question you can solve under five minutes. And I can't do testing at the time. But SCCA used to test it very well. Am I talking? So let's now see how it's going to be set. Okay, so let's see how it's going to be set. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first year, now, initial preliminary working solution to this question. Solution. We are talking of what? 5,000 multiplied by 12, are we? And multiplied by how much? What is the, what is the price? Eh? Nine. And the grant days. What does he give us? Five what? Five hundred and forty thousand naira. So we'll be after what? Five hundred and forty thousand naira. Are you with Ayuba? Now I will disregard the requirement of the question for now. Before I now come back to the question. Assuming you are told that for all the three years, all the 12 directors, they are going to achieve their performance targets. You get it? For the three years, all the directors will achieve their performance targets. We don't have any director that doesn't achieve it. So immediately you have calculated this size 40. What are you going to do? You just say year one. You'll be having one all over three because it's three years. Multiply by what? Five hundred and forty thousand naira. What does he give you? Eh? One hundred and eighty thousand. Debit expenses, credit, other component of if we that's all. In which year? Yeah, well. Are you with Ayuba? In the second year, year two. Two all over three. Multiply by what? 540,000. What do we have? Three hundred and six. Three six. Are you with Ayuba? Are you with me? Now in year two, you are still going to recognize what? Ah, uh, one what? One eight in the income statement. Am I communicating? Why 180 will be added to the existing world? 180 in the statement of changes and in the other component to become what 360. Am I copying? So in year three, say, am I communicating at all? What so that's if they are all going to meet the criteria. Am I communicating? Am I now let's now solve the requirement of the question? Factual student, are you following? So main solution to the question that is asked. Solution in year one. Year one. One third of the first period has expired by 31st December. Abi. One third. That one year out of three years, Abi, of the first period. as expired so as a result of that what are we going to be having we will be having what one all over three multiplied by five what five forty thousand giving us what one eighty thousand because of the condition they say on 31st december it is estimated that all 12 of the employees we achieve their performance target by that first thing day so far, all the employees will achieve their performance target by that first thing. You base everything on what? 
on the twelfth number of what of employees. However, by thirty first December two thousand and twenty, which is the end of the second year, this estimate has fallen to what eleven employees. So that means in the second year, second year of divesting period. We will now be having 5,000 multiplied by what? 11. Instead of 12, it has reduced to what? 11. Multiplied by how much? 9 naira has reduced by 2 odd over 3. As reduced by how much? Two over three. What do we have there? Huh? Three. Three hundred and thirty naira. Fine. We have three hundred and thirty naira here. But in period one, period one, how much did we have? One eighty thousand naira. Remove one eighty thousand naira from three thirty. One fifty. So, ladies and gentlemen, in this period two, one hundred and fifty thousand is going to be used in the income statement as expense, while one fifty thousand is going to be added to the existing equity. Am I communicating? Are you with are you bad? Okay. So equity is going to increase by 150. Why we are going to charge expense of how much? The last part of the question. Expense, these expense, add to existing work. Equities. At the end of year three, which is the last year, are we okay? Uh, however, by 31st December 2020, this estimate has fallen to 11 employees, and in fact, only 10 of the employees actually achieve their work, their target by 31st December. 2021. So let's now calculate. For this last year, we'll be having 5,000 multiplied by 11, multiplied by 9 naira, multiplied by 3 over 3 if you want. Am I copying? So what does he give you? One more. Four hundred and ninety-five thousand. Is it four ninety-five? Yes, sir. Ah, it's not four ninety-five. I made a mistake. Oh. This is ten. Is it times ten times ten employees? That's a sleep of hand. Oh, yeah. 450. For what? 450. 450,000. Can somebody tell me what is going to be the expense and the amount we are taking to equity for that year three? One more. Beautiful. 120. So you remove what? Less 330,000. Giving you what? 120. So this 120 will be expense. And what? This will be the add to what? So existing what? Existing equity of what? Of 330. Are you getting me? So we have this in the material. We have it in the material. Let me see. See how it is stated in the material. So at 31st December 2009, 
Can you see it on page seven? Hello? Hello, everybody. Yes, sir. Hello, virtual student. Can you see it on page seven? Yes, sir. At 31st December 2009, the cost of the option is expected to be 540,000. That is 12 times 5,000 times 9. One third of the first period has expired by 31st December 2002, an expense of 180,000, which is one third of 540, should be recognized in the company's financial statement for the year to 2000, and equity should be increased by how much? 180. At 31st December 2020, the total cost of the option is expected to be how much? 495,000. With 11,000 times 5,000 times 9, two thirds of the first period has now expired. So the expense to date is 330,000, two thirds of 495. An expense of 180,000 was recognized in the previous year. So the further expense of 150,000, which is 3,000 minus 180, should be recognized in the financial world, in the financial statement for the year. An equity increase by Amor by 150. At 31st December, which is the last year, the final cost of the auction scheme is calculated as well. For 10 times 5,000 times 9, which is 450,000. Previously recognized expense at 3,000. So an expense of 120 what, will be recognized, which is 450 minus 3 party. Should be recognized in the financial statement for the year to 31st and equity should be increased by amount. The amount of 450,000 shown in the equity for the share option will be transferred to what? To share capital and possible what? Share premium. Or you see other component of what? Equity. When the option are exercised by the successful employee, if any of these employees decide not to exercise their option, any remaining balance in the share to the issue account must remain in equity, but may be transferred to another component of work. Equity. Is it clear to you? So this is share based statement. This is what. That is. So something like this can be tested in your exam. Are you now going to say that uh, I've never come across? Now, virtual students. Hello, virtual students. Yes, sir. The share based payment we have just discussed, is it too technical to understand? Not at no, sir. No. So that is it. And that is how the calculation looks like. So we are going to do the other aspect of it disclosure related to the share based payment. Just read it. Let's now move on to equity set to share base. We have other examples here equity set to share base. I don't need to be reading that note again under the equity section. The note you have to read is what I've been, we are discussing. If the fair value of, let me read it just to read in fact. If the fair value of the goods or service is known, then it should be used in order to follow the option. If the fair value of the goods or service is not known, then the fair value of the option at the grand day should be used to follow the wall, the option. The fair value should be taken to the profit or loss over the first minute period on the straight line basis based on the number of options expected to be excited. The corresponding credit entry will be reduced under the wall, equity wall, equity reserves. Now, option one, let's now see this one. Okay, this is how the question can look like. Now, Bri granted 10,000. The first question here. Bri granted 10,000 equity settle share based payment to so each of his 20 directors. Each of his 20 what? That, that means in this case, we'll be having 10,000 multiplied by what? By 20. On 1st of January 2015. What is the grant date? So the fair value at that grand day should be the word, your focus. Am I talking? The option first on 31st December 2017. 2015, 16, how many years? Three years. It is anticipated that none of the director will leave over the three-year period. None of the director will leave over the three-year period. The value of the option is as follows. 1st of January 2015, 12. 31st December, 13.5. 31st December, 13.8. 31st December, 17, 14.2. Prepare the extra to the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial equation for each of the three years ended. 31st December, 2015. 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 Am I talking? So what will it be? Under two minutes, you will finish this. You say 10,000. Multiply by how many directors? 
What is the Fiafado at the prior option at uh, grant date? And what do you have? What? Two what? Two million. Can we rely on this figure? Eh? So year one. One over three times what? Eight hundred thousand. We go to where? Income statement and what? We charge it to income statement as expense. Abi, that is an income statement and what? Eight hundred thousand. We go to what? Trading side of what? Of the share of equity. Abi, equity. So year two. Two over three times two point four million. This will be what? One million. Less what? Previous what? Previous balance. How much is previous balance? And we are still having what? Equity is going to increase by how much? By eight hundred. It will become how much? One point six. Why expensive will be what? Eight hundred degree. Third year. Year three. Three over three times two point four million. What do we have? Two million less what previous balance. What is previous balance? One million six hundred thousand. You are going to charge your total assessments in income statement. Why equity is going to be increased by how much? So you, at the end of that period, you are going to be having 2.4 million in what? In the equity account. Am I communicating? And that's the end of that question. So this, at the end of 2015, 2016 and what? So in the exam, if you are given something like this, you are going to prepare your award, income statement as fact, statement of financial position or as fact. You get me the name of the company, statement of profit or loss for the year ended, statement of profit or loss, extract for the year ended. To social date, you prepare it for statement of financial position, name of the company, statement of the financial position, extract as at social duty. You are going to be sent there that way. Are you getting me? We can move to the second question. So, what of the other values given for those years? I didn't remember. What, eh? what is it? Yes, the other values. Eh? I will not answer it. I won't answer that question. So let's move to the second question. On 1st of January 2014, Adam granted 20,000 share options, 20,000 share options to each of its 10 directors. That means in this case, we multiply 20,000 by what? By 10. The condition attached to the share option is that the director must remain an employee of Edgar for how many years? Three years. The fair value of the equity set to share based payment at the grant date was how much? 69, which is the focus. Am I talking? Now, at 31st December 2014, it was estimated that, that is the end of that year, it was estimated that four directors will leave before the end of the three years. At 31st December 2015, due to a downturn in the economy, it was estimated that one director will leave before the end of the war of the three years. Prepare the extra to be shown in the statement of profit of 2014 and what? 2015. So, so they just want us to calculate it for 14 and 15. We are not working into the last year. Are you getting it? Something like this can be tested in your exam. So let's see the solution. Year one, no, before year one, the what? Total. Okay, at the end of year one, Abby. Okay, fine. What's your mic? 
At the end of year one, we are having 20,000 share options multiplied by how many directors? 10. But at the end of year one, they estimate that how many directors will leave? They, it was estimated that four directors will leave minus four. Are we okay? Multiply by what is the fair value at the grant date? 16 naira. And what do we have? Seven million. This will be what? Seven million. Two hundred thousand. That is what the calculation. Now for year one, year one, we will now have one odd over three multiplied by seven million two hundred thousand naira. What does he give us? Two million four hundred thousand. So this is the amount that we are going to do what? The amount we are going to expect and the amount we are going to show as well as secrets. Am I communicating? Note it in year one. Year two, that will be 2015, Abby. This is end of 2014, 2015 end. At 31st December 2015, due to a downturn in the economy, it was estimated that one director will leave before the end of the three years. So we now recalculate 20,000 multiplied by 10 minus 1. Multiply by 60 naira. What do you have? No, 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 no. It was estimated that it is not that they have left. They made an estimate that they would leave. They have not really left. Are you getting me? It is an estimate. One, well, stop more law. Are we okay? Assuming that you are told in the government that they have left. You get me. The one you have deducted, it has gone. Are we okay? Not it. How much do we have here? 10 million 800,000. So let's now see. We have two all over three multiplied by 10 million. 800,000. What do we have? Seven million two hundred thousand. Less what? Previous what? Previous are we value? How much is the previous value? What are you now having? How much? Five million, uh, four million, eight hundred thousand. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what you are going to expense in that period. Am I communicating? And that is the increase in what? In what? In equity. Am I communicating at all? So notice. Are we okay? And that is the end of that question. Don't forget, you, are, you need to prepare your statement of profit on the statement of financial position expert name of the company which is there for you to maximize your work if you can support this with additional notes better better see am i communicating okay the next question question number three have fully purchased infantry at the cost of 10 million on 1st of january 2015 the goods were sold in November 2015 for how much? 14 million. Afili has cash flow problem during 2015 and negotiated with the supplier to exchange the goods for option on his work on his share. 
the share had the market value of what? Of 11.5 million on what? On 1st of July, 2005. Explain how the transaction should be there, should be dealt with in the financial statement for the year ended, 31st December, 2005. Read the question again. Is that, has Philip purchased infantry at a cost of 10 million naira on 1st of July, 2015? These goods were sold in November, 2015 for how much? Kafili had cash flow problem during 2015 and negotiated with his supplier to exchange the goods for what? For option on his work on his share. The share had the market value of 11.5 million on 1st of July, 2015. Explain how the transaction should be dealt with in the financial statement for the year. How is it going to be dealt with somebody? What value are we going to use? Is it 10 million or 14 million or 11.5 million? 11. Why do you say 11.5? Okay. Eh? Market value of... Don't forget. Listen very well. Listen. listen. You get it right. I'm not saying you are wrong. It is 11.5 million we are going to recognize. Because at that date, the share at, you know, during 2015, that is the date that the transaction has occurred. Assuming we know the fair value of, we know, we know what, we know the price of that good, the worth of that good at that 2015. That is what we are going to use. If you do not you know the price value of that good, that is where we are now going to use the price that is based on the value of what, of share. Go up to see the notes. Let's go to where we have the notes on it before we move to cash set. The introductory part of the note to this page. Page seven. If the fair value of the goods or services is known, are you getting me? If the fair value of the goods or services is known, then this should be used in order to value the option. If the fair value of the goods or services is not known, then the fair value of the option at the grand day should be used to do all to value the option. And that is why we are going to use for 11.5. The grand date is what day? 2015. Am I communicating? Notice. Is it clear to you now? Notice. So let's now move to a cash settle share base. Cash settle share base payment on page eight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, cash settle. If the fair value of good is known, just like the other one, it is known, then this should be used in order to value the option. If the fair value of the goods or services is known, then the fair value of the option should be reassessed. Should be reassessed at what period? At each reporting date. At what date? And this value should be used to follow what? To follow the option. If it is share base, if it is a share set to cash a share base payment, it will be the only big price you are going to use is what? The what? fair value at what date? At the grand date. But if it is cash set to the value at the end of every reporting period. Can you see the difference between the two? Okay. Now, the fair value should be taken to the profit or loss. Your question. Hello? Hello, your question. I said, can you come? I said, can you come in? The network was shaking. The fair value should be taken to the profit or loss over the first thing period based on the number of the options expected to be exercised. What I have said is not what I, it is. That is, I have I've, I've said it before, even several times. It is the note you have up. This is the note. This is what I've just said. Have you seen it? So the fair value should be taken to the profit or loss over the first three period based on the number of the options ex expected to be what? However, there will be a cash payment. The credit entry is recorded as a liar. So in this case, you don't talk of what? You don't talk of share capital again. What are you going to be talking of? Because payment will be made in future by what? By cash. It is the liability account we are going to be crediting. Am I communicating? Is it okay? So let us now see the question that follows. Illustration four, page nine. Gada granted, Gada granted 10,000 cash set to share base payment to his 20 director. Listen, 
I want you to listen to this question. It is unlike the one we have been dealing with. Gada granted 10,000 cash set to share this payment. So it's 20 direct. They don't, they don't say to each. That is where they are going to wait for some students. That is where they are going to wait for some students. Can you calculate how many number of shares are they granting to each director from this? 10,000 divided by 20. Five hundred. You can see. So you know, many students must have practiced with what uh, each director. And by the time they see, it, they will not even look at it critically. They will just multiply it by twenty. And that is the beginning of the failure. You will not fail. Are you following me, virtual student? God has granted ten thousand cash settlement peer based payment to each twenty directors. On 1st of January 2015, the option vest on 31st December 2017. It is anticipated that none of the directors will leave over the three years period. The fair value of the option is as follows. On 1st of January 2015, how much is it? 12,000. That is the grant date. 31st December 2015, how much? 13,000 what? 13,050 copper. 31st, 2016. 31st, and 2017. So, solution to this question. Hello? Fear value of the for settlement in cash. Fear value of the share at the end of every word reporting period during the world. Vesting period. During the first period, are we okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, so at 31st December, solution to question four. At 31st December, 2015. We'll be having the general calculation 10,000 multiplied by what? What are you dividing? Multiplied by 12 naira. What does it give you? Multiplied by 13 naira 50 cobalt. Are we okay? That is the peer value at that date because this is cash, peer value cash set. So what do we have, everybody? One hundred and thirty-five thousand. Are you getting me? We now have one all over three multiplied by one thirty-five thousand. What does he give you? Forty-five thousand. Debit expenses and credit what? Liability. That's all. 31st December 20 what? 2016. We have 10,000 multiplied by what? 13 point what? 13.8. All the direct, I mean, what does he give us? It is thousand. Eh? 138,000. Good. We now have two odd over three multiplied by 138,000. What do we have? 92. 92,000. <laughs> Less previous value. How much is it? And what do you have here? What is seven thousand? Debit expenses and what? Credit liar. Are you following Aluba? Thirty first. December 2000 and what? 
we have 10,000 multiplied by 40.2. Giving you how much? 42,000. What? 140. Previous value. How much is the previous value? 92,000. And what do we have? 50 what? 50,000. Debit, expenses, and credit what? Liability. Pray they should test this like question number four. On the max. On the max. So that is your best statement. It's not what happened. But let me tell you, if you come across something like this in the exam and you have never done, we didn't do it like this. What would be looking like glucosate? Eh? What would not attempt it? Oh, yeah, yeah, car. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You cannot see this sipping like this. What did you say, sir? I'm sipping tea. Okay. You can you join me? Ah, uh, I may come on Monday. Let's reserve you it. You are what? I will come on Monday. Reserve it for me. Okay. Can you solve this question number five? Can you solve it? On 1st of January 2014, shall we? Hello, everybody. Question number five. Let us attempt it. Solution to question number five. On 4th of January 2014, Shida granted 20,000 share appreciation rights. Sir, I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell you. What for the call it was? Sir, share appreciation rights. Sir, S A H. In the exam, they can write it in a big way like this. Sir, share appreciation. You might have come across it. Sir, sir stands for share appreciation right. So anytime we have share appreciation rights, you should know that it is cash fetching. Where really, you see share appreciation right. You should know it is what cash section. Am I communicating? You don't need to think twice again. Anytime you see sir, you know it is what cash section. This again. Now this engagement. Let's continue. If music is melody, let us continue. Now, listen, on 1st of January 2014, 1st of January 2014, she got granted 20,000 star to each of its 10 directors, each of, so that means in this case, we will multiply 20 by 10. The conditions attached to the cash set to share based payments is that the directors must remain an employee of CEDA. For how many years? Three years. The fair value of each of the cash share based payment at that first December 2014 was 80. At that first 2015 was how much? 75. We are given two years, Sadi. At that first 2014, it was estimated that four directors would leave before the end of the three years. 
At 31st December 2000, due to a downturn in the economy, it was certain that two directors would leave before the end of what? Of the three years. Prepare the extra to show in the statement of profit. I wish they should tell something like this for, for say, 12 marks. It is still reasonable. When you have something like this for 12 marks, you are you just be smiling. They are, what if I don't know who could then? So, ladies and gentlemen, let us forge ahead. So, we have 2014 and 15, Abby. So, 31st December. Twenty fifteen. Twenty fourteen is the first year. We have twenty thousand multiplied by what? How many number of employees? Ten minus four. Multiply by what is grant date at thirty first December two thousand and fourteen? How much? Eighty naira multiplied by eighty naira. What do we have? Nine million six hundred thousand. So we now have one all over three multiplied by nine million. 600,000 to know the amount that we are going to recognize in the income statement and in the what statement of financial position as liability. 3 million. Eh? 3.2 million. 3 million. 200,000. Debit and credit. Are we okay? Don't forget, you will prepare statement of profit or loss extract. You prepare statement of financial position extract. I'm only doing what? Trying to manage time. Am I talking? So, 31st December. Twenty what? 2015. 20,000. Multiply by 10 minus what? Multiply by what? And what do we have? Eh? 12 million. Somebody say it is 12 million. Million. We will now have two all over three multiplied by what? What does he give us? What is the amount that is previously recognized, previous amount? This was amount is how much? Two million. Three million two hundred thousand. And what do we have now? Four million. Six. Debit expenses and credit what? And that is the end of that question. Last but not least, on share based payment, testing condition. Testing condition are two. We have one that is based on the market value, we have one that is non market based, non market value based.
ha. Let us continue. Testing conditions, non-market-based and market-based. I believe you have no testing condition. What is testing condition? What is testing condition? What is testing condition? Okay, me. Okay. Money, what is testing condition? On car, no tea for me. Testing condition, those are the conditions. Are you getting it? That must be what? Must be there. Before the, uh, the they are going to be entitlement to work, the award of what? Of the grant. That's as simple as that. You know that option can be awarded to them. Okay. Now, we have testing condition. Some are market based. Why some are non war market based? Market based force. Condition related to the market price of the company share. Market based testing condition should be ignored. When you have anything that relates to the market price of share, you have to do what? You have to ignore it for the purpose of estimating the number of options that will do what? That will invest. But if you have conditions that relate to what? Relate to an employee having to remain with company for a fixed period or related growth in the company or hand. No market based testing condition are taking into account at each word reported. So that's why we are deducting those number of employees that are expected to be. They are non market. Base. But if it's market based condition has to be ignored, you don't ignore no market based, you ignore what market based. Am I talking so naughty? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's see this one more question. Sesha granted 5,000. Sesha granted 5,000 share option to each of five directors on, five, on 1st of January 2015. The share option will vest on 31st December. 2017, still three years. If the share price reaches what 15 naira, if the share price reaches what market based condition, it has to be ignored. It is not anticipated that any of the director will leave during the three years. The fair value of each option was what 12 naira at the grand day, and the share price at 31st December 2015 was how much? Now, what is the value we are going to use here, everybody? 12 naira. Because we are not told that cash is going to be received. This is not cash set to be share. Are you getting it? So now, due to the fall in the global market at the start of 2016, it is not anticipated that the share price will rise above its current price for the foreseeable world future. So this is a very straightforward question. Explain the accounting treatment in the financial statement for the year in the 31st December 2001. Just one year. Just one year. Solution. You know, non market based. We don't have any non market based condition here. We only have market based changes in the share price, which is not going to be taken cognizance of. Am I talking? So, let's and gentlemen, 5,000 option to each of his five directors. We have 5,000. Multiply by five. Are you with Ayuba? Multiply by 12 naira. That is the word. The fair value at what date? The grand date, which is going to be your focus. You forget about increasing the share price. Those are what? 
market-based condition that will not be taken into consideration. Am I talking? So, ladies and gentlemen, you now whatever you are having here, you multiply it by one all over three, and that's all. Now, this and gentlemen, the last question here. At entities grant one, and entities grant one share option. How many share option? Solution to question number six, and solution to what? So, if they want to make, if they want to make share based option, are you getting me? So, be what? To at least look as at, at, at a good question. This type of question number seven is what they can find for something like what. Fifty marks. They, they may allocate twelve to this one. They will not give you that. Maybe you should write. You should differentiate to the cash. How the cash base and what and share settlement will be what will be accounted for. They can say three marks, something like this. You come for twelve marks, making fifteen marks. You get me. So let's now see what we have there. An entity grants one share option to each of its five employees. That means we'll be having how many options? 500. On 1st of January, year one, each grant is conditional upon the employee working for the entity over the next three years. The fair value of each option as a 1st of January, year one, is what? That is the what? The fair value at what day? The grant day, which is going to be the only price you are going to make you. Any other price you may have here to disregard it. This is not cash set. Am I talking? Is it clear to you now? This is not SAH. This is not share appreciation rights. Am I talking? If it is share appreciation rights, you need to know the fair value at the end of every reporting period. Factual students, am I communicating? Okay? Yes, sir. On the basis of a weighted average probability, the, est, the, what, the entity estimates on 1st of January that 100 employees will leave during three year period. And therefore, on 1st of January, though, that is the estimate on 1st of January, they estimate that 100 employees will leave during the three year period and therefore forfeit their right to share option. The following actually occur. So, what has actually occurred is what you are now going to base your calculation upon. Now, 20 employee leaves during year one. And the total employee departure over the three period is revised to what? Okay, 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 okay. Over the three year period, you know. What are you going to do now? It is something you are going to base the calculation on now. Are you getting me? 20 employees leave. Do you get it? Don't forget, the total estimate is what you are now going to base it upon. With it. Seven, that 70 is in what 20 is embedded in it. Am I complicated? 25 employees leave during year two, and the estimate of the total employee departure over the three period is revised to what? 60. So here you are using 60. Are you getting me? Now, in year three, 10 employees leave during year one. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 employees leave during year three. Do they make any estimate again to buy it in the last year? No. What are you now going to do? 20 that has left in the first year. Plus 25 that has left in the second year, plus 10 that has left in the third year. The three will not be added together. That's what's not going to be the door shelf that you base your calculation on. Am I communicating? Prepare the extract. Shall we now solve it? Okay. Solution. At 31st December year one, that is 2001. The, it is only two years they even want us to calculate. Let's calculate it for, the, for all the three years. Year one, two, and three. Are we? Okay. 14, 15, 16. Are we? 
Let's see. Year one. We will have 500 minus what? Minus 70. Are we okay? That is the revised word. Multiply by what? What is the word? 10 naira. Pia Fadu are the grant dates. What does he give us? What? 4,300. Okay. 1 all over 3 multiplied by 4, 3. What do we have? One thousand four thirty three. One zero four three. One four three. Are we? One four three three. Okay. One four three three. Sorry. Where is this going? So expenses and um, what is it called? Shares. And what? Equity. And equity. Year two. Year two. We have 500 minus what? 60. Multiply by what? I'm coming, please. Should be 20 has left here. Okay. Minus six, additional 60, Abby, that they refine. And that 20. Am I talking? 20 that has left in what? In year what? In year one. Minus 20 that has left in year one. Are you getting me? I thought the 20 is already embedded in the 60 since they said okay. over the three years. Listen, 25 employee, employee, 20 employees live during the year one. I want you to know. The many, how many employees? 480. Are you getting me? They revise that way. By the end of that third year, 70 must have left. Are you getting me? Now, 25 employees live during the year two and the estimate of total employee departure over the three year period is revised to what? It's revised to what? It's revised to 60. Am I complicating? It is the estimate over the three year period. Okay. So, why it is over the three year period? That means that 20 is what? It's embedded in the Part over the three year period. So, if they say over the remaining, <laughs> over the three year, that is what? 60. Are we okay? So, multiply by what? By 10. What do we have? Four. Four, four hundred. Four hundred. We are now going to have two all over three multiplied by four thousand four hundred. What does it give us? Two thousand nine thirty-three. Two nine. Three three. Previous what amount? One And what do we have here? 2,500. Abby? 15. 15, sorry. Abby? 1,500. 1,500. Don't forget expenses and what? Equity. Last but not least, the last year. When there is no estimate again, yeah, what? Yeah, three. We have 500 minus 20. Are we? Minus what? Minus 25. And minus what? Minus 10. Minus 10. Multiply by 10 naira. What do we have? Four, 
Four fifty. Previous amount is how much? Two thousand. No, what? Two thousand. And what's now the balance we are having? Half I want seven. One thousand. 517. 517. Note it. Expenses and what? And equity. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the little we can do today. May God bless it for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. I believe um, you are able to add one or two things to yourself today. You are able to give one or two things today. That's it. Yes, more than one or two. Ewa bani muti o. Okay, but me fit a million job Monday, Mumbo, Abany. Shabbo, although a mina more, a mina more, give Gona Lawa to Rotu to Muladi Boom. Daddy, you know, 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 video <laughs> Any Oh my God! Oh, sorry, mommy. Mr. Yemi, can you me no Ah, get
Saidat Ahmed Saidat Ahmed No problem Sharp this pin and lash it where are you? Ah, look out. Me, my body, body. Hey, 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 in Kato Tins, you can come to Dalo Judio. You're welcome. In Kato Kati Dalo Judio. Uh, 
Twenty. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, period. Uh, uh -huh. Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, uh -huh. But why you call me girl? What you do? Only my boy best here. What you want to do? Ah! 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 Thank you. 
Voilà les mains au Michael, <laughs> 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 Et nous tous I want to I want me to be done. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
No phone number, Abi. Registration number. Registration number. Registration number. Number. <laughs> OGH new. OGH. Rogane Kabo. Imam.